Hi, everybody, and welcome to beautiful Trailer Stadium and even more beautiful Rosenberg, Texas. I'm Roger Smith. This is VibeFortBend.com Friday Night Football as Foster takes on Fulcher, a fantastic rivalry game. In fact, I think it's as good a rivalry as we have going in Fort Bend County. I'm Roger Smith, glad to have you with us. Rosie Vega is the silent partner inside the mothership at Vibe World Headquarters. Patrick Kinnick will be along to provide color commentary. And now we're gonna start the countdown to kickoff show. And we've got some elements in it that we don't normally have. So we're just gonna step aside real quick and be back first with Shane Hanks. He's been getting his teams ready, his team ready. He is the Foster Falcons head coach in his second year. And he's got plans for tonight, regardless of what the records are. Each team is 2-0 and in their district games, but Foster had not won until those two district games, and Fulcher is unbeaten on the season. So we'll see what happens, and anything can happen in a rivalry game, although it was very one-sided last year, which makes me think perhaps tonight it could be a lot closer. We'll be back on VibeFortBend.com with Coach Hanks when we return. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through September 21st, get fast, reliable Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Actual speeds vary. All right, everybody. It is the countdown to kickoff show. Friday night, rivalry game, Foster and Fulcher. Shane Hanks, head coach of the Foster Falcons. Coach, is this one of those weeks where you kind of have to make sure they don't get too ready too early because they want to get at those Fulcher Chargers? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we could have played on Monday. They're excited and fired up. And I told them, too, you know, being 2-0, and I expect to be 2-0 and going into this game. You know, I really did. You know, we had a tough non-district schedule, uh, lost those four games. Didn't expect that, but that's okay because right now it didn't, it, that doesn't matter right now. You know, I expect to be 2-0. and We're 2-0 and for this game and have a chance to have an opportunity to play for the district lead tonight. But, uh, but yeah, they were ready to go Monday morning because we practice everything in the morning, and uh, they're, they're ready to go and fired up. And what are the components of your team that have really come together in these last couple of weeks? I think a little more, uh, you know, team chemistry, of course. I mean, the guys really get along, but more of the bonding on the field. Uh, we're seeing that offensively. Our run game's really taking taking, taking place. Um, Plats and passes are doing well. Defensively, as we started stepping up, playing playing well uh, together, um, and, and specifically our defensive front uh, playing, playing really well. So I feel like that's been the key for us these past two wins has been our – our front and our cohesiveness offensively. Not that your team needs a competitive edge for a game such as this, but have you said a little something to them about the one-sidedness of last year's game to help them get ready, so to speak? So, so there's a great quote. I, I, I love, I love Tombstone. All right, great, great Western. So there's a part in the movie that said, "It's not revenge we're after, but it's a reckoning." So I told him. You know, we're not looking. Excuse me, we're not looking for a revenge game. You know, because half those guys didn't even play in that last year. We're looking to come out, set the tone, play hard, get after it. You know, we're in a great opportunity, a great position, being two and zero. Great position for our main goal is to make the playoffs. Okay, so we're in a great position to do that. Let it loose tonight, play hard, and let's get after it and see what happens. All right, so we're excited about it, and you know, regardless of what happens tonight, no matter who wins or loses, I think there's a very good chance that both of these teams will be in the playoffs. Fantastic chance. Um, really, I, I think the magic number is four wins. And, um, you know, we have four games to get to, to two more wins. We have four games to get there. So that's, the, you know, that's why I feel like it's shaping up. And like you said, we've got a perfect opportunity tonight to get the district lead. 
All right. Thank you, Coach Hanks. And by the way, while we've been talking, I think the people can hear in the background, those are Fulcher students who don't play football. We're trying to bait your guys. And I noticed your assistant coaches said, don't listen to that. Pay attention to what's happening out here between the lines. Yeah, enjoy the atmosphere. They're, they're heckless. And that's, what, that's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, animosity can be a beautiful thing. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Coach Appreciate Hanks. Thank you, buddy. All right. We'll continue with the countdown to kickoff show. Our coverage, as always, brought to you by Xfinity, home of the 10 G Next Generation Network only from Xfinity. The future starts now by First Tyrant Automotive with four great Fort Bend County locations and also by Leonetti Graphics, the official banner provider of VitefortBend.com. And those hecklers are doing their thing. They're not going to stop. We'll be back. It's fall, y'all. Head over to First Tire and Automotive for a free tire pressure and tread depth check. There's a store right around the corner from you in the Sugar Land area. First Tire and Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. A full synthetic oil change to $60. Oh, my. And more savings on the website. Book your appointment today at firsttireandauto.com. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive, Ford's convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. Welcome back to the Countdown to Kickoff show. We are doing things a little bit differently. We'll have Zane Smith's mom in a moment. So that means we have a very short segment with Coach Nick Caduti of the Fulcher Chargers. And Coach, is this... As, as big a rivalry game as you normally have during the regular season? Absolutely. It's Foster Week, right? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, the Battle of West Park Tollway. It's, it's Foster Week. I can't, I mean, you can't say anything else again when you're in Fulcher, so. Well, I know the important thing for any football team, it's not how you do at the beginning, it's how you end up. And Fulcher, or Foster rather, was off to a, a poor start, but they've won the first two district games. And I know you've scouted them. What do you see in these last two games? Okay, Coach Hanks does a great job. Um, they've progressively got better every week. I think that, uh, you know, the past two games, they've really shown, kind of found their identity, figure out who they are, how they're going to play, what they're thinking. Um, I'm actually really impressed, you know, and so it's going to be a really good game tonight. I think a really physical football game. Um, probably a lot of extracurricular activity that we probably need to put a nip to pretty quick. In earlier games, I've asked you about your offense a lot, but I wanted to ask you about your defense. Do you think they are, are they progressing in all the ways that you want them to? And uh, what is the, the best strength? Is it the guys up front or the secondary? You know, I would say overall they're pretty good. I'd say our front, our front seven's pretty pretty good. Um, you know, I think they had, a, they had a rough go last week against Hastings, who has also progressively gotten a ton better. Um, but, you know, they shut them down in the third and fourth quarter, and, and we ended up winning handily. But, you know, I think that our defensively, that's kind of the strength of our program. You know, I, I know people talk about our offense, but defense is what makes us great. And uh, Coach Sloan's done a great job, and these kids are awesome. Well, I love rivalry games and I'm very excited to see how this one turns out so good luck tonight to the Chargers appreciate you Roger always gonna be a good one all right we'll be back with Zane Smith's mom but I guess I can stop calling her that we'll be back with Callie Smith no relation to me we'll be right back Lean Eddie graphics the gold standard in Fort Bend County for screen printing embroidery banners signs t-shirts and all kinds of specialty items whatever you need to advertise or show school spirit team spirit or company spirit Nobody does it better than Lean Eddie Graphics. We started creating our products in an apartment 23 years ago, and now our state-of-the-art facility in Stafford has everything to make your vision come true. Call your friends at Lean Eddie Graphics, 281-499-4959. Lean Eddie Graphics, the official banner provider for VipeFortBend.com. Welcome back to the Countdown to Kickoff show. It's the rivalry game, Fulcher taking on Foster. And we usually talk to coaches in this segment, but right now we're talking to a player's mom. It is Callie Smith. She is Zane Smith's mom. Is that the thing that you're most famous for at this point in your life? Oh, absolutely, yes. Okay, so Zane is the powerful fullback. He's got the long blonde hair, and we'll talk about hair in a moment, but he's got an older brother named Seth, who was a full sure football player, a fullback, and he ended up becoming a professional athlete. Tell us about Seth. 
Seth um, decided after school to go play for the Houston Sabercats. They're our professional rugby team here in Houston. And he's the youngest major league rugby player ever. And he actually has been very blessed and got major league player of the games, the week. So we're very proud of him. So if he's class of 23 at Fulcher, then he is 19? Yes, he is 19. His birthday's in June. So he's he was a young graduate. All right, so I'm very excited about seeing what Zane and his teammates accomplished this season. Uh, it's started off very well, but does he have an offer that uh, you are have put your foot plumb down on? Does he know where he's going to college? Will there be other offers, you think? He does have one offer as of right now, and obviously we're hoping that he gets more. We feel like he deserves some more offers, but we will see how it goes and take it from there. All right, so let's talk about the hair. I'm kind of wondering, as a mom, is it is it a good thing for you because you don't have to pay for as many haircuts? Does it cause a problem in, in cleaning up? It, are there long, long, long blonde hairs on your carpet and in the bathroom? Tell me about that. Oh, wow. Well, we've saved a lot of money on haircuts. Let me tell you, the last time Zane got a haircut, he was in second grade. So that'll just tell you. He's been growing it since then. And we love his long, luscious locks, but he does not like to brush them that often. So, you know, when he does, yes, there's definitely hair everywhere. But we love that about him because you can always find him. You know where he's at. Yes, and sometimes I'm watching a game. It could be a game on TV. There, there are a few players who have the really long hair, and sometimes I see part of the hair is coming out the ear holes of the helmet, and I'm just kind of thinking... When you take off the helmet, don't you have to be careful because it could really hurt if you yank on the hair? He is so used to it. We've asked him, hey, does it bother you when people yank on your hair? And he goes, mom, I don't even feel it. He goes, at this time, I'm just so focused on the game and, and what's at hand that I don't even notice. Well, you know, high school football in Texas has always been great. But when I was playing it back during the Jimmy Carter administration, <laughs> they were just playing a different game. I mean, what they have today is just amazing is there an insider's point of view that you can tell me about uh things that if you weren't a football parent right now uh, kids would have no or, or others would have no idea just how how tough it is i mean uh how often do you have to how how often does he have to go somewhere and work out does he ever have a saturday off is ever anything ever required of him on a sunday that kind of thing Yes, by the time we get to the weekends, it, it's mostly rest time. He, he loves to go fishing, so that's how he spends all of his off time when he's not at school at, or at football, which is nice and relaxing. Take a little break. Does he come home and talk about strategy and, and what they do as far as the play calling, or does he come home and it's time to focus on other things? Oh, no, he absolutely does. So the one thing that's so great about Zane, which makes him a threat to the competition, is he, his knowledge and understanding of the game. So he'll come home and he'll go over plays and this is what I think is going to work and I'm excited to try this and, you know, you're not going to believe what we have going on this week. It's going to work. I know it's going to work. So it, he's very into it and enjoys that part of it a lot. All right. I'm loving this visit and I wish we could make this go longer, but I guess there's only time for one more question because the kickoff is coming soon. But Something that I see, and it's not just at Fulcher, I see it at other places that would never happen when I was in school. They're playing music during practice. I mean, that was just unheard of. I grew up with a dad, a post-World War II dad, and he said, when you're doing work, you don't ever have the radio on for anything. He, he did let us listen to college football when we raked leaves, but that was about it. So uh, that just goes against everything I was taught. Oh, no, it's absolutely perfect for the guys. I mean, from the minute they get to the school or they get on that school bus to go to their games, they've got the AirPods in, they've got the music going, they're getting pumped. I think it really helps them a lot to get ready for the game. All right. Well, the reason I know about that so well is I go to volleyball matches at Fulcher. I'm going in there on a Tuesday afternoon. I see the football team practicing. I hear the tunes. They're not exactly my favorite tunes, and uh, yes, then they, I the go in. they pick it is quite a bit different than what we're used to. <laughs> well, of course, the music that we are used to, you know, it it's 30 or more years old, and yet everybody knows all the words. I don't know that that's going to be true of today's music. 
I sound like an old fart now. <laughs> Absolutely not. You can't even understand what they're saying these days. All right, that is Callie Smith, and we, uh, of course, would continue love talking to her, but uh, maybe maybe she should be the color commentator. We could talk the whole game. Do you want to do that? I'm good. Thank you. Okay. All right. So uh, it is Foster against Fulcher. It's a rivalry game. From what uh, Callie tells me, there's a whole bunch of back and forth on social networking, not so much predictions, just insults. But that can make for a really good game. I love animosity. It makes for a great matchup. Absolutely. Go Chargers. All right, so uh, next time uh, these two teams play, which I guess will be in about 12 months, then I'll, I'll let a foster parent be, not not a foster parent, but a foster high school parent <laughs> be part of the Countdown to Kickoff show. Uh, Roger and Patrick on VibeFortBend.com. We'll be right back. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through September 21st, get fast, reliable Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Actual speeds vary. All right, here we go. The captains are about to go out to the middle of the field and let us know who's going to get the football first. And Patrick Kinnick joins me up here on the concourse at Trailer Stadium. And uh, if you can refresh me, were you with me for the game between these two teams last year? It was so one-sided. I don't think I was, Roger. Well, it was tough to watch because it was 56-3, to Fulcher over Foster, at the halftime break and you know that's been sticking in the falcons craw which is you know birds do have a craw so so that makes me feel like i did something that is ornithologically correct in making a metaphor there very good fulcher by the way they happen to have lightning bolts on either side of their helmet just like the san diego chargers and patrick i think this is the first time that i've seen them wear white uniform pants they have white uniform pants with purple jerseys that have gray numerals, and the helmets are kind of two-tone. They're dark at the bottom and white on top with the purple lightning bolts. I like them. It looks good. Zane Smith is one of their captains. Also, Patrick Broadway, their outstanding running back. Creighton Dickey, a hard-hitting linebacker, and Demarius Fro. And for these... Foster Falcons, Eli Smith, junior linebacker, one of the captains. Jack Denherder, no relation to the Dolphins' Vern Denherder from the 1970s. I remember that name. Daniel Humphrey. And there's one player who's who's uh, obstructed from me by referee Mike Alsabrooks. You see what I did there? I yes. let everybody know who our referee is. Very well done, Roger. So what I know is that Fulcher is going to be going from west to east in the first half. They will receive. Foster won the toss but deferred. And so we'll see the Fulcher offense first. And they've been operating with a sophomore quarterback who's kind of been learning the job as he goes along. That is Ryland Forks. And when we did Fulcher games back in September, Coach Caduti was saying, we're not gonna count on him to win games. We're just gonna have him do what we need him to do. And as time goes on, then we will count on him to make those big plays to win games in the clutch. So do you think this can be a rivalry game that stays close? I hope so. Um, get a little motiv motivation from the Falcons here tonight. Uh, maybe a little reminder of last night's, uh, last week's game. And who knows? Demarius Froh is going back to receive the kick along with Mike Brown. 
and also Thomas August. They have Caleb Augustus and Thomas August. Hmm. Very easy to get them mixed up. Yes. Well, could it be a better night tonight, Roger? Beautiful Friday night here at Trailer Stadium. I don't think it could be. Nick Lopez ready to kick off for the Falcons, wearing the black uniform pants, the white jersey tops with the black letters and numerals, the black helmets with the gold Falcon emblem on either side, and we are ready to rock. And so is the crowd. The band, I guess that's the Fulcher band, pounding the drums. And he had a little bit of a wind at his back, but this will be returned, and it is muffed. The ball is loose inside the 20, still loose, and Foster jumps on it. Foster will have the ball at the eight-yard line. What oh, a play. Came right off his shoulder pad, the uh, chest area, and it bounced about 10 yards in front of him. He could not get to the ball before one of the Foster players attempted to get it, and then someone else got it and after the guy, a roll. The guy who got it in the end, Jonathan Montanez. What a recovery, what a break, and you're going to try to produce an upset. These are the kind of things that need to happen for you, and uh, now they got to take advantage of it. Of course, Folster is trying to squelch the early opportunity for the Falcons. It came down to Thomas August, and just in case you're wondering, since we do radio, there was no sun in his eyes. The sun is at his back, and the sun has set already. So here we go. Caleb Lawson in the pistol formation. Turns around and hands it off straight up the middle. And the full shirt defense is right there to limit Addison Ojaku to a gain of one, if that, second down and goal. Looks like they had a couple of pulling blockers from the right to left trying to lead the way. One of the blockers leading the way was uh, Burke, big number 77, Houston Burke. Caleb Augustus has really emerged as a great, well, I was going to say run stopper, but... He can play the pass, he can stop the run, he can do so much for the Fulcher defense. You only got one on that first play. Let's see if they go to the air here. Three receivers on the left side of the formation. There's a handoff again, same play. Up the middle, fighting near the three yard line. The scrum is moving sideways toward the end zone. Where's the and ball? And I think it's gonna be at the one yard line. There are wow. Foster players saying that they got a touchdown as Ojaku was the carrier again. It is gonna be third down and goal, and I think they're inside the one, aren't yeah, that they? That was quite a run, and then the last two yards, the scrum began, they got some blocking from behind, and I thought he kinda got in there, but just about a half yard short. Let's see what they do here. They're trying to muscle it in. Well, if Foster pu punches it in here, I'm gonna say it is game on. <laughs> All right, let's find out. And now it looks like they're going to go uh, from a wildcat formation. And that does not work. It was Ojaku trying the right side, and he was just buried in the backfield. And guess who it was? Caleb August. Well, Roger, I'm going to say it. I might repeat myself later, but i just not in favor of the sh uh, shotgun in that situation. He, uh, before he was able to get anywhere, he's uh, tackled at the two-yard line. Had he been under center, he wouldn't have been able to be tackled at the two. Well, mistakes are important in a game like this, and I just made one. I said Caleb August. It's Caleb Augustus who made the tackle. <laughs> you, just, you said that there was going to possibly fool you. So they're going to try the field goal. It's an 18-yard attempt by Nick Lopez from the right hash mark. He puts it up and through the uprights. Three to nothing. Foster gets the early lead, but they wanted seven. We'll be back on BikeFortBend.com. It's fall, y'all. Head over to First Tire and Automotive for a free tire pressure and tread depth check. There's a store right around the corner from you in the Sugar Land area. First Tire and Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. A full synthetic oil change to $60. Oh, my. And more savings on the website. Book your appointment today at firsttireandauto.com. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive, four's convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. 
All right, so when Fulcher goes back to receive the kickoff this time, there is a substitution. Jonathan Chipman is back there as one of the three return men. Mike Brown is the other one, and Demarius Fro is standing at the 25 just in case it's one of those shorter pop-up kicks. You're right about that. The last time uh, the receiver was... You know, the wind might have got that, that kickoff a little bit, Roger. You said they had the wind to their back. It may have... May have uh, just miss, misread it a little bit. It came off his chest pad. And that yeah, that's certainly a possibility. You yeah. think it's going to land, yeah. you know, and, and hit your sternum, and yeah. all of a sudden it's hitting you in the face pad. Typically, you, you would not want a, the ball to come to your chest, so it might have fooled him a little bit. Good job of the full shear defense to hold him to three, but Foster, I, I like the move to go for three there. Get some points, get on the board. All right, let's see how deep Lopez kicks it this time. It's a little bit shorter than the first time. It's taken at the 10-yard line by Mike Brown. And he's got a good return across the 40-yard line. Correction, it wasn't Mike Brown. It was Jonathan Shipman. Yep, they would switch sides just before the kick, Roger. They, uh, they do that yeah, just, just to fool you. Just to fool me. Because yes. I think you look down just at that moment, and they had already switched switch right to left. Good field position for... Uh, Fulcher off that good return by Chipman. Well, Fulcher has a running game that is about as subtle as a punch in the face. <laughs> they like to run the straight T, and they have three running backs behind the quarterback, Ryland Fort. and one of them is Zane Smith. Now he moves to the right. Creighton Dickey is kind of an H back right behind Smith, who's at a tight end position. And there's a flip over to the right side, and they're running the sweep, and they get good yardage. First down and more inside Foster territory, and now at the 38-yard line, and the carrier is Sheldon Rice. Yeah. Sheldon Rice, who by trade is a linebacker, but he can really do damage as a running back. It's a first and 10. They mark him at the 35-yard line. That's a first down. Think of First Tyrant Automotive. For all your car care needs, check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. Helton was the man who saved the touchdown for the Falcons. Now Patrick Broadway, who is the most frequent ball carrier in this Fulcher running game, checks in. They fake the handoff to him and Forks throws near side. Zane Smith turns around but dropped the football. He had to whip his head around and it was right on top of him. And Caden yep. Carter was closing in fast. And it yeah. was just a matter of if it had been over the inside shoulder, I think it would have been an easy catch. Yeah, he was looking inside. The ball went to the outside. He had to rotate. And uh, it's tough to do because you got to find the ball again uh, when you rotate your head like that. So they came out passing on the second play. By the way, the width of the Fulcher formation is never very much. They yeah. just don't have many wides. Forks sends Mike Brown in motion. Jet sweep to the right. Brown cutting it up inside the 30. Sideline. There he goes. All the way. Touchdown, Mike Brown. 35 yards. And with 8 minutes and 41 seconds to go in the first quarter, Fulcher gets the first touchdown. But well, there's a flag down. This may come back. Well, I uh, boy, it must have come uh, after the first down yardage. Wow. That is Mike Alserbrooks, our referee tonight, and Chance Bryant was the guilty party on the hold. Well, I saw one of the blockers out there. Um, I'm trying to think if it was him or not. I, I was going to name him. Let's see. Is it He's 50, 59. 59. I didn't see him even block anybody because I was watching him lead the play, and I thought, geez, he doesn't have anybody to block. Well, but it was a spot foul. He must so, have got him downfield. Yeah. yeah, he must have been inside the 15 where he committed that that infraction so it's still first down you realize that mike brown's a freshman yes i do holy cow 22 yard line first and 10 far hash mark and there's a give to zane smith running the jet sweep to this side zigging and zagging hurdles a man near the 20 and gets down close to the 15. Yeah, Hayden bateman on the tackle for foster coming nice up run. out of the secondary nice run by smith there i've got a timeout what is this? What is this? An injury? Oh, I see. Here, Just there he uh, is. on the near side, Melton down there between the numbers and the sideline. Yeah. We've seen a lot of cramping last night. How many did we see last night, Roger? Looks like about ten guys had 
cramps, but it seemed like it was later in the game. This one's coming early. Hopefully that's all it is. By the way, we want to remind everyone, tomorrow we've got Saturday matinee football. You get into the middle of October, and then you don't have Saturday night games. You have Saturday daytime games. So at 11 a.m., it's going to be the Randall Lions bringing their top 10 ranking and their undefeated record into a pivotal district battle against the Texas City Stingarees. And it's a good thing for uh, Helton is up and walking. Um, I, he's got to come off the field for one play here, and he's actually jogging off, so that's a good sign. Are you sure? I see a player right here number, on our side. No, number now seven. they're just getting oh, into his oh, feet. Oh, another. Okay, Helton was down and okay. number 10. Okay. Derek Agu. Okay. So I guess there were two Foster were two, players you hurt. You saw him, and I saw the other guy. Uh, he's walking off, too, though. That's good. Ag what is it, Agu? Agu, A-G-U. He is uh, walking. Well, he's rocking pretty well, actually. I think he's going to be back in a ball game. He's now trotting off. That's good to see. So they've held him uh, out of the end zone so far, but Fulcher, it's been hard to stop him so far positive yards every play second down and three from the 15 yard line again Fulcher is going from right to left that is from west to east in this first quarter from the beautiful horizon to the east it's it beautiful. is a very nice view from oh, up here I love this this uh, scenery here we have a, such a great location where the table is Roger and uh, I love it Ryland Forks calling things out at the line now he takes the snap and he hands it off to Zane Smith, running left, breaks one tackle and jumps down to the 10 yard line. And again, coming up out of the secondary, it's Caden Bateman making a stop, but that's enough for a first down. First and 10 from the 11. Would you like to tackle Zane Smith? I think I'd rather tackle a rolling ball of butcher knives. <laughs> he is, uh, he's a load. And we can't see his number on the back of his jersey, but we know who he is because of his Locks. Yeah, I'll never misidentify him. And now we've got early movement. One of the Fulcher linemen uh, was mistaken on the snap count. Yep. So that'll be a false start. And it wasn't hard to see who it was. <laughs> Big number 77, Righteous Spencer. You know, he's one of the Righteous brothers. And he's a sophomore, Roger. Big sophomore. you got guys on the team that are you know, underclassmen there with the quality of... Uh, performance it's and amazing. by the way let's see if he's uh did i read that right what's yeah. his classification uh, sophomore sophomore yeah. so yeah. he may not be 16 yet so pretty soon he'll be spencer for hire oh, first down and 15 forks gives it off to patrick broadway hit in the backfield he only gets a yard if that yeah i think he busting lost. through lucas bachman got a solo tackle for loss i think well Looks like they're marking it right at the line, but uh, nonetheless, good play for Fulcher. The only thing that stopped, uh, I think, it, did I say good play by Fulcher or, or Foster there? I, I don't know what I said there, but they're both. Well, that would have to be Foster. <laughs> that's Foster. And no gain tackle. Yeah. yeah. Um, the only thing that's really stopping Fulcher, except for that play right there, is Fulcher. They got a couple of costly penalties, but here they are, second and 15. Will they call upon Ryland Forks to throw the football? Nope, they hand it off, and there goes Broadway. His offensive line gets a good push for him, and he carries it down inside the eight-yard line. Number 73 has to come off. His helmet came off. That's uh, Diaz, Tino Diaz. He's a junior. Uh, but like you said, Roger, what a surge that line had. I'd like to run behind that for eight yards. So it's a third and seven here. You think they'll throw it up in the air? I expect them to run a sweep to the right with Patrick Broadway. All right, let's find out. It has to be a long down and distance situation for them to consider it a passing situation. No, it's a bootleg, and Forks is going to throw it. He's got Zane Smith in the flat, gets around one man, diving toward the end zone. He doesn't get to the end zone, but he does get a first down at the one. Well, first and goal. Uh, Parnell had a chance uh, to trip him up, but, you know, the cornerback, uh, he's probably outweighed by about 50 to 60 pounds. He tried to trip him up. He couldn't quite get him. Almost had a good play for him, but uh, first, uh, again, Zane Smith, he is just a load, and he's pretty nimble, too. Zane Smith, whose mother told us in the countdown to kickoff show that he hasn't had his hair cut since the second grade. Come on. That's what she said. Oh. I believe her. 
Wow. All right, this is the biggest bunch formation I've ever seen. There's no daylight between any Fulcher player, and now we got somebody jumping across. It's offsides on Foster, so they'll be penalized about 18 inches. Yeah, it's not going to be. It's going to be a half a yard, but uh, that'll make the bunch surge a little easier for for Foster with the big line and. Uh, yeah, like you said, you couldn't even see the guy who was going to get the ball. They were surrounding him. I don't even know who is. Well, now it looks like they're going to change the formation. Or the way they? they were lined up looked like a scrum in rugby. And by the way, Zane Smith's older brother, Seth, is a professional rugby player. Forks hands it off. Broadway in the middle of all those bodies. He no. gets into the end zone. It's Zane Smith. Oh, Zane kept it. Yeah, he, he had it. Uh, it was a handoff to Zane Smith. Get it the, about the half yard line. He just kind of. Bounced off that and uh, kept his feet the whole way. And Fulcher, will they be going for two? Do they like to go for two, Roger? That's what they normally do. And please forgive me, it was almost like watching a team run that slot T offense. Yes, it's, I love this offense. I, I, this is the kind of stuff I like. Kind of old school power football. It, it helps to have good backs and a big line, but uh, they run it effectively. They got a chance here to go up eight to three. See what they do here. They like to go for two. Forks under center, tosses it. They go into the outside as Broadway following his blockers and he goes into the end zone standing up. The two pointer is good. It is eight to three, Fulcher over Foster. 5.54 to go in the first quarter. We'll return to Trailer Stadium on fightfortbend.com. Xfinity here, how can we help? Hi. Um my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while well, their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through September 21st, get fast, reliable Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Actual speeds vary. Brandon Parnell is back to receive the kick from Braden Kennedy. But sometimes Fulcher likes to do an onside kick. They do a lot of moving around. And it is an onside kick. It's bouncing around. And Foster recovers it at their own 48-yard line. The sure-handed Cooper Venable. And that will give the Falcons good field position. Well, the Falcons were lined up totally ready for it. I mean, they had five guys across the line and then maybe just about five yards behind them they have four more guys so they were ready for it and they got great field position at the 48 yard line you got to have really good defense and a lot of confidence in your defense to do that onside kick like that the way they do relatively early in the game all right we'll see if foster might start throwing the football a little bit and now their quarterback is riley blanton two running backs next to him and he hands it off straight up the middle that's going to be a gain of maybe three or four yards. Blake Vaughn carrying. Ideally, Foster, they got about four yards on that play. Ideally, they would, you know, if they pass it, looks like they're going to give them five yards. By the way, i got to correct myself. It's uh, A.J. Akinbile. He carried. All right, I think 27, it's, not 21. It's, it's about a four-and-a-half-yard game. But anyway, my point was that Foster ideally would like to run the ball, run the clock, and uh, keep the ball to the Chargers' hand. But that's a lot easier said than done. Second down and six at the 48-yard line of Fulcher. The Falcons going to run it to the left. It is the quarterback. And he gets most of what he needs. Riley Blanton coming up about a yard short of what he needs. Asher Jacob. First down. Sorry to bother. Sorry to interrupt there. Asher Jacob got him from behind. Otherwise, I'd look like he was going to get that first down and more. It's third and two now. Well, they tell runners sometimes, you know, follow your blockers. Don't yeah. outrun your blockers. Yeah. But in that case, he was waiting for the the daylight to develop and 
There was he a nice was, run down. It was a nice hole, though. They picked up a solid yardage. See if they could pick up a third down and short. That's what costs them on that first possession. Blanton ready again. He has two running back choices in the spread formation. Takes the snap, hands it off. Running over the right side. It's close to a first down, but I'm not sure short. that they have it. In fact, Oscar Bandus Vargas is short. Body yard short. It, all, it look, almost looked like he didn't get the handoff. He uh, barely got it to him. Looks like they're going to go for it, Roger, on fourth and one. And they break the huddle quickly, hoping that Fulcher's defense isn't really ready. And it's just that push play. It's the sneak. I think they got it. If, uh, if that mark is right, they're... Looks like they're right on that line. It'd be the 42. The surge was good, Roger. I thought they clearly got it, but now, All right. the, now yeah, the mark, they did. I think they're gonna mark it at first down, aren't they? I think they will. Caleb Lawson, by the way, came back in and took that snap. The ball's right on the on the hash, Roger. And now they finally get yeah. the signal to yeah. tell the chain gang to yeah. move. We could see it up here. <laughs> and uh, a big first down for Fulcher. Uh, excuse me, for Foster. They uh, just got scored upon, and um, they ran the ball three times, four times. Excuse me. Let's see these. They beat three runs, four runs. They ran it on fourth down, too, yes. First and ten from the 42, and it's a keeper going to the right, and a gain of only a couple as Caleb Lawson, he... He found a little crease and yep. he ran through it, but then that hole closed up quickly. Filling it was Asher Jacob. Well, I didn't think they gave him everything he got there. They only gave him a yard. I thought he got to the 40, but um, anything positive. I mean, even a yard, that's better than a loss of yardage here. So I would be encouraged if I was Foster right now. But they got to prove to themselves that they can yep. finish a drive with a touchdown. You're right. Second and nine. Hand off straight up the middle and a hard hit. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I tell you. So it's just a gain of one yard, but on the play, it was a dream hit for Evan Ferns as he blew up Oscar Vargas. Oscar Vargas looked like he was gonna run for a, a, a little scamper there for some positive yardage and then he hit a brick wall. You hate to say it that way, that's kind of a cliche, but it really, <laughs> he stopped pretty quick there third and eight now this is not the type of down and distance that the Falcons would like to see mainly maybe even a concrete wall <laughs> Daniel Humphrey is a receiver out to the left he's probably their most talented target it's a quarterback keeper and a tackle for loss Sheldon Rice boy he shot through there in a hurry didn't he <laughs> Holy mackerel, you can tell he wasn't blocked or he found a crease in there and there was no, no chance at all for the runner, the quarterback. Riley Blanton, you know, he's probably well accustomed to being able to outrun linebackers yeah. and defensive ends, but Sheldon Rice he was, is just a whole nother situation. Yeah, he was there so quickly, there's not much he could do as the clock winds under a minute and a half here in the first quarter. Mike Brown back to receive the punt for Fulcher. The snap is good, and it's gonna be a fake. They're running for it, and it's a fight for the first down. He's going down the near sideline. He's got it. First down for Foster. I don't know if that was planned or not, but Blake Vaughn made the first down. He was kind of acting like it was about to be a rugby-style punt, Yep. and he ran a little bit, and then he thought, I got some daylight. He only had to avoid one tackler. And he barely avoided that guy, and I thought he was going to be knocked out of bounds, but he tight roped that sideline all the way down to the 23. And I think, yeah, I wonder if he has an option on that. The way he, he sort of hesitated, and then he thought, well, there is some room out here, and he made one guy miss. Big play for the Falcons now as they approach the 20 yard line of the uh, Chargers. All right, here we go. Now in at quarterback is Blanton. Fakes a handoff, options to the right, pitches it out, and it's a nice gain down inside the 15-yard wow. line. He flipped it out there, kind of like the yeah. Texas Longhorns of the 1960s used to do, <laughs> the wishbone, 
That was Akinbele, and he takes it all the way inside the 15 to the 14, and it's it's second down and one after that nine-yard pickup. Akinbele uh, did a good job after the initial hit. He probably picked up four yards after the initial hit. This could be the last play of the quarter if they run it, which would be good news for Fulcher, or for Foster. Akinbele and Agu. In the backfield next to Lawson, there goes Akinbele, and he tries the left side, and Sheldon Rice just knifes through and drops him for a yard loss. I think It'll be third and two. I think they'd li I'd like to stay away from him if I was running the ball. That's the uh, last play of the quarter, Roger. We're going to flip ends here. Well, the thing about Rice, no matter where you run it, he's going to be there. Yep, that's true. We'll be back on VibeFortBend.com. After one quarter, it is eight to three, Fulcher over Foster. It's fall, y'all. Head over to First Tire and Automotive for a free tire pressure and tread depth check. There's a store right around the corner from you in the Sugarland area. First Tire and Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. A full synthetic oil change to $60. Oh, my. And more savings on the website. Book your appointment today at firsttireandauto.com. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive, four's convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. We are the volleyball school with three locations, Katie, the Woodlands, and our newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high-level training you need to get on the top club and school teams, and you'll have fun doing it. Our Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. Tuesday night volleyball presented by the volleyball school is Clements taking on Austin next week. Akinbele up the middle, diving through, and he picked up a first down. To a down to the 12-yard line. Another big run for uh, Kimberle, and not a not a long run, but enough for the first down, Roger. And again, Fulch, uh, they both start with F. So yes, I, they uh, do. I have a hard time. And here. they both end with R, <laughs> and they're both two syllables. <laughs> and there's an S in there on both of them. <laughs> it is easy. Anything else, Roger? <laughs> uh, Foster is doing a good job. They're keeping the ball and. But like you said, can they complete it with a touchdown, though? That's the big question. I think their their confidence will swell up if they can put it in the end zone. Lawson turns around, hounds it to a Kimbele, and he's hit in the backfield. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. Boy, that's a and was that Sheldon Rice again? No, this time it was Caleb Augustus. Caleb Augustus, and they've had a couple of high tackles. That, that tackle was right, a, right around the neck area, Caleb but uh, sometimes you can't avoid that. Well, Akinbele is so short, he's it's not, hard not to tackle him high. He is not a very tall fellow, and that's for sure. You're right about that. He's kind of like uh, Don Nottingham. You remember him? I remember the name. What? Well, he was. Uh, they called him the human bowling ball. He's not, yeah, I just re realized how short he is. Second down and 11. Play fake. Lawson throws. End zone. Wants Humphrey. He's got it. He hung Daniel on to that. Humphrey. Touchdown. Wow, what a catch. And he out Brody Washbrook. Well, the defender did not turn around, and it got right over his shoulder. And what a catch. I didn't think he hung on, but he did. That's Humphrey, you said, right? Daniel Humphrey. And now Foster is going to pull out what we call the swing and gate formation. They have their kicker, Nick Lopez, on, and now they move everybody back to the middle of the field in the conventional place kicking uh, alignment. Well, they have the lead, we know that. It's nine to eight, and they got into the end zone, Roger. Good snap and hold, and Lopez gets it airborne, and it is good. That was a, that was a solid kick, wasn't it? So Foster takes the lead by two, 10 to eight. We'll be back on VibeFortBend.com. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? 
Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through September 21st, get fast, reliable Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Actual speeds vary. So Lopez gets ready to kick off. And I think Chipman is deep. And maybe Mike Brown is back there as well. Fulcher has been using different combinations of return men. Mike Lopez try an onside kick. No, he kicks it fairly deep. And it is Chipman from the 11 on the far side. Back to the middle of the field. Gets to the 25. Continues to come to the near side. He's hit near the 26. He's fighting. And he gets to about the 27-yard line. That was a nice duel. In the open field, two guys, Jalen Green got him first, and then Hashawn Jones managed to help him get him down. Well, so he, a half a tackle for each. Yeah, I think Hashawn Jones was uh, fighting the blocker, and he fought him off and then got in on that tackle. Good job to, to get him to, uh, only to the 28-yard line. And the thing that the Foster has to do is just continue as best they can to uh, maintain a close score. The longer it gets uh, into the game close, that's good for them. Hey, Patrick, they're running a spread formation. Fulcher out of the shotgun, and it's Forks running left and then cutting up the middle, gets two yards, and that's it. And very happy with himself <laughs> after the tackle is Oscar Trevino. Yeah, he came up stomping a little bit, and... Uh, showing some enthusiasm toward his crowd over there. And speaking of that, Roger, we got a great crowd here tonight. Boy, sure both do. sides uh, represented very well. We also have a helmet that came off. Tino Diaz of Fulcher has to leave, and I believe coming in for him on this play is Jalen Thunderberg. No gain on that play, second down and 10, and now Forks is under center. Takes the snap, hands it off to Zane Smith running left, and he's hit near the line of scrimmage. And I thought for a moment that the ball might have come out. It looked that way, didn't it? But uh, it's a no-game play, and, and the officials are telling both oh teams boy. just get in the huddle. They are we chirping We got snarling now. and snapping yeah. going on already. They're, they're getting uh, they're getting after each other. That time they got a a, a a defender was able to get him at the at his feet and sort of trip him up. And then I don't I can't I can't tell you who the the fellow who came in to uh, clean up that play. But he hit him pretty hard for a one-yard gain. Yeah, it was a scant yard. That's what I'm going to call it. There you go. Third down in a long nine. Pistol formation. Forks hands it off. Mike Brown coming to the near side. Breaks two Mike tackles. Up. Keeps on going, but he's short of the first down. Gets to the 35, and that is it. That's will, all she wrote. They, Jackson Green made sure that it wasn't a first down. Will they go for it here, Roger? They're, they kind of like to... They're unconventional. I think they will because they're bringing in Demarius Fro. So they have Patrick Broadway and Zane Smith and Demarius Fro behind Ryland Forks. Can the Falcons come up big here? It's about a four yard, three yards away, and now is a timeout. Falcons want to talk about it. Yeah, they do. It's a big play. All right. By the way, Patrick, let's stay right here let's do it. while they talk about this because. We've had so much going on on the field here tonight that I haven't even mentioned halftime. Oh, my gosh. We've got the it's Rice Owls game. Heroes from 1994. The they West. defeated the Texas Longhorns on a rainy Sunday night. Yes, that's right, a Sunday night. Yes. Because in 1994, there was a baseball strike, and there wasn't the NBC Sunday night football that we know now. 
So ESPN decided that, hey, every Sunday we got kind of an open evening, so we're just going to pick a college football game and move it to Sunday. And did they make a good decision there, didn't they? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the, the Rice people would say so. <laughs> well, let me say this. If you like sports nostalgia and historical sports, you got to listen to this interview. Roger does a great job, and it's, it's really good. So I'm giving it a thumbs up. What is that? What is that? Uh, Siskel and Ebert. Thumbs yeah, up. Thumbs, thumbs up. up. For both of them. That's right. All right. Fourth and three. Straight T formation. And the give to Broadway. Coming left. Oh. He's breaking through. 50 yard line, 45. Nobody to beat. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Patrick Broadway breaking through. Taking it the distance. And I did it again. It's Demarius Fro. 65 yards. It was Fro, as you said. Oh, my goodness. They couldn't get him at the line. Once he broke the line, there was nobody left. And he went stomping down the sidelines for a 65-yard touchdown. So you had a chance to stop him on fourth and three, and it turns into a touchdown. And I had the chance to give Demarius Fro <laughs> the proper... Oh. Audio description of one of his great plays. Ah, okay. They're going for two, and they go to the left, and this time it is Broadway. Oh, boy. What or is it? Yeah. It is Broadway. What he gets the two-pointer. Fro gets the touchdown. He literally walked in, Roger. Did you notice that? The I last, did. The last two steps, he, there was nobody there, and he literally walked into the end zone. 16 to 10 is our new score. 828 to go before halftime. Fulcher back on top. It's fall, y'all. Head over to First Tire and Automotive for a free tire pressure and tread depth check. There's a store right around the corner from you in the Sugarland area. First Tire and Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. A full synthetic oil change to $60. Oh, my. And more savings on the website. Book your appointment today at firsttireandauto.com. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive, Fours convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. Okay, Fulcher is about to kick off, and I have learned you don't say who's going to kick off because they have four and sometimes five guys who kind of run up to the ball and act like they're going to kick it. So you never know who's going to do it. It's an onside kick. It is up and for grabs. And who oh. got it? Big fight for the ball. And Fulcher got it at the 50-yard line. Boy. See if you can figure out who it was. I think it might be Jonathan Chipman. People are congratulating him. Yeah, I can't tell. I just could not tell. The that, ball moved around like a yeah, pinball. It was uh, looked like two or three guys for both teams had a chance until finally it might have been Chipman who came down with it at the 49-yard line. Oh, my goodness. It was a good kick because it bounced at just at the right time over the head of the initial uh, receiving man for Foster. It was a perfectly bad hop. Right. A Tony Kubek bad hop. Depending on which team wants the hop. All right, so Fulcher, who just regained the lead, 16 to 10, has the football, and Sheldon Rice is in the backfield. He's the running back, three in a row, and they give it to Sheldon Rice, running left. He gets to the line of scrimmage and bursts through for two, maybe three yards, just, just on the basis of his initial, uh, I'm going to say, foray into the line. Jackson Green made the tackle, and it's second and seven. If the Falcons can find a way to stop them from scoring in this possession, it would be huge, but uh, that's a big, tall order. They had a really good series the last series until the fourth down play. They really did a good job, and then the fourth down play broke them. Second down and seven. There goes Sheldon Rice running left again. Same play. And he gets about five this time, and an ankle tackle from Caden Carter makes it third down and three. You get the feeling that the Fulcher Chargers are not afraid of third down or fourth down at all. They're willing to, obviously, if they don't get it here, you, you expect them to go forward on fourth down. So maybe the mentality is 
We don't have three downs. We've got four downs to get the first down. Everywhere is four down territory, yeah. it yeah. appears, for the Chargers. There's that tight formation again. All right, so heavy to the right side of the formation and a toss to Patrick Broadway. No, it's Fro. Oh, it's Fro oh, inside the 30, 25, 20. Sideline, angle, inside the 10. Tumbles to the eight. Saving the touchdown was Addison Ojaku. And it's going to be first and goal for Fulcher. What you and say, Fro right? does it again. We've got a man that's shaken up down there. I think it's uh, Helton. Here's it. Is that his name, Helton? Uh, yeah, Helton. He was shaken up earlier. Uh, but at, anyway, you said right before that play that they have they were heavy to the right. So they just what they, all they did was they outnumbered them to the right, and they had great blocking and and fro. What a last couple carries he's had, 65 yards, and then uh, I'm trying to add that one up. All right, since yards. the injured Foster players on the near side, I think we can take a quick break and be back. When we return, it'll be first and goal for Fulcher just inside the 10. They lead 16 to 10. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through September 21st, get fast, reliable Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data. Okay, we'll make good on that commercial soon, but we're back to live action. Go into the right. Getting stoned at the line of scrimmage is Patrick Broadway. It'll be second and goal from the nine. Among those tacklers uh, was uh, Trevino. Trevino and a couple others were there to get him for a one-yard loss, it looks like. There'll be a second down and goal from the 10. Tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. kickoff. It is Randall putting their Class 5A Division II top 10 ranking and their undefeated record on the line against a tough Texas City team. Here's a turnaround and a handoff and a, a tackle in the backfield. Uh, Broadway is going to end up with two yards. I guess his knee didn't hit when he was initially oh, struck. Marker. And now uh, after the play is over, a flag comes in. Let's and see. That the players just cannot unpile in a civil no, way. I don't know how he was not down because... I think even if your shin comes down, I think you're down there. Right? I'm surprised they didn't blow the whistle on that one. And now the conference at about the nine yard line amongst three of the officials. Looks like it might be one of those posts, was it kind of after the play, wasn't it, Roger? Yes, uh, uh, after the play, here's Mr. Alsa Brooks. That is a killer. They had him third and goal from the nine. Now they give him an automatic first down. You just can't do that against Fulcher. They're gonna they're gonna make you pay. All right, so you got Zane Smith, Creighton Dickey, and I'm trying to figure out who the back is on the left side of the formation. Forks turns around and hands it off to that back. It is Broadway, touchdown. Right down Reading Road. And by the way, what are you pointing well, at? Is there, there a flag? A little, well, there was no flag, but it was a little extra after the touchdown was scored. There were a couple of guys uh, brawling a little bit at the, about the 10-yard line. But the referee got in there in time to avoid further, further problems. And again, it's the two-point try. Broadway, Smith, and Creighton Dickey behind Forks, and a give to Broadway, running right, gets to the edge, turns it up, dives into the end zone, and keeps his feet. The two-pointer is good. It's 24 to 10. Fulcher on top. We'll be back on VikeFortMen.com after this from Xfinity. 
Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through September 21st, get fast, reliable Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless bill and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Actual speeds vary. All right. Fulcher's going to kick off, and the guy who put it on the tee, which doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the guy to kick it, is Peyton Tucker. You know they onside kick it about as often as they go for two following a touchdown. But this time they kick it fairly deep. The ball is going to go. Oh, oh my, my goodness. God. He uh, Stepping out of bounds near his five-yard line was Brandon Parnell. And unfortunately, I think he could have left the ball alone. Well, another, another post uh, play foul. It's going to be on uh, Foster, I believe, number four. Hogan gave a shove to one of the uh, Fulcher players who sold the shoves, shall I say. He okay, well, I'm going to tell you this, though, Patrick. Let's see what Mr. Alsabrook says about how they're going to adjudicate this. <laughs> but you could either decline it, and Foster's going to have to start just outside their six-yard line, well, or it, it might be a half the distance. I think it's half the distance right now. Yeah. It's, it's going to be after the play, so it's not going to be a redo, I don't think. But uh, you wonder, you know, sometimes you get baited into things, you know. Uh, I don't know if anything was being said. I'm sure there's some words out there. But Hogan was the last guy, and it was pretty well, obvious to see. Mike Alsabrooks, our referee, is now going over to Shane Hanks on the Foster side to explain something to him. What could he be explaining? Um, he might be just telling him what the player did, and, yeah, and he might be saying, we don't want to throw too many flags. Oh. Oh. Oh, you, he fielded the ball out of bounds, which means it's out of bounds, I think. Okay. I you? think I think that's how that, that is. I, uh, if I If I remember right, I, I think I've seen that before, which is kind of an odd play uh, because I've heard it once before where the guy says, if he just feels that up ball out of bounds, it's an odd, it's a it's a kick uh, like they just said, an illegal kick. But I don't know about this other penalty. So maybe it was a very wise play by Parnell to run out of bounds and pick up the ball. Turns out to be maybe, yeah, That's I think that is the rule. It's okay, a, so. It's an odd rule, though, but it, uh, I believe that's right, but I don't know, I guess that flag was not for the roughing that I saw after the play. All right, Foster with the ball, Caleb Lawson in the spread, and it's a pitch out on an option going to the right. That's a pretty good gain, about seven yards, and I think that's the first carry for Jordan Williams. And he gets out across the 35. Oh, it's chippy out here, Roger. Another post play penalty. And who is it going to be against this time? The way the Fulcher's moving, it might be against them. Okay. Uh, it seems like they're trying to get one of the Fulcher players to walk away. Oh. It's a penalty against Foster. So Jamar Wilson of Fulcher, I believe, kind of baited one of the Foster players into doing something either verbal or uh, physical, not it's, sure which. Something's happening, and it's it's costing Fulch, uh, Foster here. The last couple penalties have been against them, and they're either retaliating or they're instigating, obviously, but uh, that nullifies about an eight-yard gain. And now it's going to be, let's see, will it still be second down? I think it will be. Yeah, if it's after the play. Second down, and instead of second two, it's going to be second and about 20. 
not what they needed in this situation. By the way, in, to my eye, Mr. Also Brooks and his crew are doing a great job. Sometimes teams go out there deciding that there's going to be yeah. some of the chippiness that we've seen thus far. All right, Lawson hands it off on a draw play, and this uh -oh. is a disaster. The ball is loose inside the 10. Fulcher says they have it, and the officials agree. First and 10, and a first and goal at the 8, and it's Caleb Augustus who the jumps on the ball, and what made it possible, Asher Jacob punched it out of the running back's hand. Yeah, they were on. They were all over that play right from the start. Ball came out early and bounded down inside the 10, and we're in danger zone now if you're the Falcons. Yeah, they're down 24 to 10, and... If they could keep it at a two-score game, they will receive the football to start the second half. So it's going to be a tall order here. Yeah, it will be very hard to keep Fulcher out of the end zone right here. Forks with three running backs behind him, fakes a handoff, bootleg, throws in the corner. Caught! Touchdown! They threw a touchdown pass. It's Trey Jametta. Trey Jametta makes the touchdown catch. And Patrick, you may not know this, but what's really hard about Trey Jametta is trying to decide, is he a better baseball player or football player? He's just a sophomore. Yeah, I see that. Talk about a couple of key players, uh, underclassmen. That was just a beautiful pass because it was not defended that badly. Got over the defender's fingertips and uh, good catch there. Guess what? They're going for two. Forks. Hands it off to Smith. He's in the middle of a scrum. He's pushing toward the goal line. Did he get in? He did not. Both uh, linesmen looking in and said no, short of the goal line. So that's a so little bit of a plus, huh? The score the remains 30 to 10 after the failed two-pointer. 5.03 to go before the half. And our visit to commemorate the Rice victory over Texas will be right back on BikeFortBend.com. We are the volleyball school with three locations, Katy, the Woodlands, and our newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to get on the top club and school teams, and you'll have fun doing it. Our Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. All right, Tuesday night volleyball presented by the volleyball school. This week is Clements visiting the Austin Bulldogs. But you know when it comes to volleyball, Patrick, I pretty much only have eyes for the Fulcher Chargers. I've heard that before. Wow, they are so good. And I I think they have a team that can, can do something really special in this their very first year in Class 6A. And if they do it, Vike Fort Bend com will be right there the kickoff bounces near the 25 and it bounces out of bounds so do we having flags over there patrick i thought i saw well that's probably the, because of the kick was out of bounds okay it might be a a pink uh october breast cancer awareness month towel or something it's interesting that they call that penalty illegal procedure it's interesting that they call it that it's I don't understand. It's why so they, vague. Yeah, what a, why don't they just say uh, illegal kick out of bounds? And you know they change things over time in football. It's constantly changing. New rules every year. Yeah. But you and I, people our age, have been hearing the phrase illegal procedure yeah. for, yeah. you know, ever since I was in kindergarten. Now they call it false start or something. I mean, it's just, but it's still, every once in a while you hear that. Yeah. All right, back on offense goes Foster. Riley Blanton in it, quarterback with 5.03 to go. It's 30 to 10, Fulcher over Foster. And Foster's been playing pretty well. They just given up a couple of big, long plays, and they've given the ball up deep yep. in their own end. Yep. Blanton hands it off straight up the middle, gives it to Oscar Vargas. And it's a pickup of three, maybe four. Give him four, second down and six from the 34. Just to uh, add to what you were saying, Roger, the score 
just is not indicative of the way the game seems. It seems much closer. Foster has played well, and the turnover at the inside their 10 killed him. Uh, the onside kick killed him. And then that fourth and three for a 65 yard touchdown. Blanton ran over to the sideline to get the play, ran back in between the hash marks, gave his teammates the play, and now the play clock is down to two, one. They better snap it quick, they do. And a handoff straight up the middle, and not much daylight for Akinbele. Caleb Augustus in there again, and when the clock winds down like that, that play clock, and you're trying to rush it, uh, usually bad things happen, and it did that time for the Falcons. Uh, about a three yard loss. Caleb Augustus, in every full shirt game that we've broadcasted this year, he really makes his presence felt. Early and often. He sure has tonight. All right, near side you got a tall drink of water, Daniel Humphrey, one on one coverage over here on third down and nine. Will Blanton throw the football? He's the guy who caught the touchdown. Indeed. And off straight up the middle, Akinbele. He gets two, but that's about to be it. And Jamar Wilson wrapped him up and bear hugged him down, not in an affectionate way. No. Nor should he. <laughs> and it's fourth and eight. Well, Foster needed to keep that ball for the rest of the half, and they were unable to do it. Now they got to get it off to Fulcher, who has not been stopped yet tonight. Much to the chagrin of the Falcons. All right, dangerous Mike Brown goes back in deep safety to return the punt of Akinbele, but Akinbele can run with it, remember. Hey, look at his position. Uh, Brown, what's his position? Right in the middle between the hash marks. I'm talking about his, on the on the roster. Here's, oh, here's I, the I'm, not, I'm not looking there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's a short punt, and it rolls to a stop at the Fulcher 47, and we got two players. Uh, not exactly exchanging pleasantries <laughs> over not, here. They, they appeared to be dancing, but they were not. Believe Aguedo was, uh, like Patrick said, appeared to be dancing with, uh, is that number 70? Because, I'm not sure. oh, he's number 10. Okay, it's uh, Agu, Agu, uh, Derek Agu. Anyway, I was pointing. Aguedo and Agu. Mike Brown, you know, they always say a fullback, quarterback. Uh, safety. Yeah. His his position is athlete. Athlete. Just just athlete. They got a couple of those on the roster. There, there's there's no position. It's just he's an athlete. And how about this, <laughs> Chance Bryant? If you're number 59 and you're an athlete, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're a very unique athlete. Well, there's a penalty against Fulcher. I did did they give us the announcement? I didn't hear it. We were. I was pointing something out to Roger, so that is absolutely my fault. Apologize. There. Well, it's kind of like it was dancing with the stars, and Mike Alsa Brooks, the referee, was the judge, and he didn't give them a very good grade for their dance. <laughs> they marked off the ten. Agu and Agato couple. <laughs> First and ten for the Chargers, leading 30 to 10. They have it at their own 36. Forks under center, hands it off to Mike Brown. Jet sweep near side, gets away from one man, but not the second. And he picks up maybe two, three yards, something like that. Joshell Ivy brought him down. Penalty marker well downfield. And Zane Smith is looking at the official like, I'm not sure what you're calling here. He's got his hands on his hip and he's just standing on the 49 yard line. I'm not, <laughs> uh, looked like he might be able to squirt away there, Brown, but then uh, the tackler came in and was able to. Uh, is that the th about the third or fourth unsportsmanlike we've had tonight? And uh, these teams don't like each other. A right? pretty obvious big rival rivals. By the way, they called it the West Park Tollway rivalry. Oh, really? That makes sense for Fulcher. Mm -hmm. They're right on what would be the West Park Tollway if it continued west. Yeah, yeah but not. But but. Foster is a long way from the West Park they, they, Tollway. They, they got to rename that. Roger. They got to call it the FM 359 rivalry. Something like that, yeah. That's a big. Penalty. I know my roads. <laughs> I travel to so many high schools and sporting venues. All right, second down and very long. Play fake. Forks drops oh back. Has time. Goodness. Deep down the middle, and it's incomplete. 
He <laughs> led his receiver too far. It was Braden Kennedy, and he was past two defenders, but I don't think Forks can throw it far enough now as a sophomore. I know that arm will get stronger, but he couldn't quite get it there. Yeah, if you could have got if you got, a, got rid of it a little sooner, it might have been a better situation for him. But yes, he was open. My goodness, I had I kind of interrupted you in mid-announcing there, Roger, as Kennedy roamed about five yards beyond the defender. I don't know what kind of a move he put on the defender, but he was wide open. All right, Forks looks over at the sideline. The play clock is at eight. We got to get assembled. It's now a pistol formation with Broadway behind him. Fakes a toss to Broadway and sets up a screen to Zane Smith, but he drops the football. Did he drop it? Yeah, he dropped it. Well, they, they're marking it as a catch. Wow. Okay, well. Great defensive play there by it's number 26. It's again, uh, that's uh, Ivy. He read it. I was watching the, the screen action happen, and I watched Ivy. He was positioning himself and made a great play, and that's fourth down, so... Are we still okay, Rod? Yeah, we're still okay. We got a little Wi-Fi connectivity problem. Even though we're using in-house Wi-Fi, it's not working right. So I'm going to switch to our uh, our old reliable. Zane Smith is going to punt. I noticed he was punting during warm-ups. Let's see what he comes up with. Now the timeout. Not sure what. All right. This so uh, this uh, you may you meaning the listeners out there. Boy, this you may a, lose us briefly. By the way, it's a penalty against uh, Fulcher. Boy, they really went backwards on this series. They were they started at the 46 penalty, and they marched them all the way back to their 13 here. All right, 106 to go in the half, and the snap to Zane Smith running to the right. He's going to keep it. Are you kidding me? It's fourth and forever, and he hurdles a man. Goes out of bounds near the 40. He still didn't make the first down. Yeah, that's all fun. But <laughs> they feel like, okay, our defense can keep them out of the end zone if it's 40 yards away with less than a minute to go. Well, the thing is, is uh, they probably figure it was as good as a punt, and basically it was. It had, they, had he kicked it out of there and they received it, they probably got the ball right about there. So uh, why not take the chance? Patrick, and we're going to take a quick break because I've yes, got to do yes. something technical. We'll Let's be right it. back. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones, well, their parents are sharing videos online. Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through September 21st, get fast, reliable Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Actual speeds vary. Lee Graphics, the gold standard in Fort Bend County for screen printing, embroidery, banners, signs, t-shirts, and all kinds of specialty items. Whatever you need to advertise or show school spirit, team spirit, or company spirit, nobody does it better than Lee Eddy Graphics. We started creating our products in an apartment 23 years ago, and now our state-of-the-art facility in Stafford has everything to make your vision come true. Call your friends at Lee Eddy Graphics, 281-499-4959. Lee Eddy Graphics, the official banner provider for VipeFortBend.com. Okay, if you are listening to this broadcast live you might have had a dropout but we think we're back with you and if you're listening to it on the podcast we record everything and send it in one big recording so you shouldn't miss anything if you're listening on the podcast all right foster has it inside the 20 at the 19 yard line and they run it straight over the right side handing it off to bargus and a timeout taken with 43 seconds to go in this first half foster let's see is that uh, Foster has one more timeout remaining after this one. Let's just recap. The uh, Falcons got the ball at the 39-yard line. First play, a little quick pass to the right uh, for five yards. Late hit out of bounds. 
tacked on 15 more. That took it to the 19, and there they are now at the 18. So uh, there's a lot of uh, energy out here on the field. Several unsportsmanlike penalty calls, a late hit there on that one. And if the Falcons can score here, as Roger mentioned earlier, they're going to get the ball to start the third quarter. So uh, could make it some, somewhat interesting here. 43 seconds left in the half, and they have one timeout remaining. And Foster didn't waste, or I, I'm not going to say waste. They didn't spend too much time talking about it. They got out there and lined up before Fulcher broke up its defensive huddle near the sideline, and we are ready to go. Now, and now wait a minute, that? timeout, Fulcher. We'll take it with them. We'll be back on BikeFortBend.com. We are the volleyball school with three locations, Katy, the Woodlands, and our newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to get on the top club and school teams, and you'll have fun doing it. Our Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. Is there something you can tell me? Uh, no, no, it'll be later. It'll be later. Yeah, it'll be later. It'll be one of those things we only say when people can't hear us out well, there, no, right? It's not a big deal, but uh, not necessary over the air. All right, 43 seconds to go, and Foster with a second and nine. Dropping back, stepping up, rolling to the left, and sacked. Down goes Caleb Lawson. Caleb Augustus was there. Sheldon Rice was there. And Timeout Foster, that's their final one of the half, and also Eamon Ediali. Where are you happy that I said that name yeah, for I you? I saw Hudson there too, number three. Yeah, Logan Hudson is a big play guy too. Yeah, big loss there, and uh, the quarterback got hit by about well three little three three different hits on that play for a loss of uh, about six yards. So they're going to have third and about fourteen. You know, very conscientious people who study football and, you know, all the ways that you can get hurt playing football. They very conscientiously try to make the game less unsafe. You yes. can't really say that you're going to make football safer because it's just not safe. you got to be a, a tough individual to play it. And I really respect these kids and the coaches who teach them the right techniques. But, you know... Well, they got some big kids out there who are fast and yeah, strong and yeah. big, and you know sometimes, sometimes something breaks. Well, the, somebody I thought I heard—I don't remember who had said it—but it's not a it's not a tough game. It's a violent game. And it's not a true. contact sport. Yes. It's a collision sport. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, so it is third down and fourteen. No more timeouts for Foster. Empty backfield. Lawson drops back, throws over the middle. Oh. Humphrey's got it inside the five. It'll be a first down, and we've got a hole in the backfield, maybe. If not, possible roughing the passer. I we'll think, see. I think it might. It's a hold. Yep, yep. Oh. Right at the last minute. I believe it was um, Augustus uh, bearing down on the quarterback there, and just at the last minute, one of the linemen kind of tugged his shoulder pad there and what an unfortunate play because what a catch that was there by Humphrey holy mackerel oh yeah it was a beautiful pass beautiful catch at it all the way down to the two but it took a hold to keep Augustus off the quarterback in time for Lawson to get rid of it yep unfortunate for for the Falcons clock down to 28 seconds and it's running now empty backfield Lawson drops back steps up Near the line of scrimmage, lets it go. Up oh. Touchdown, Foster! What a pass. Oh, yeah. Wow. He had a step on Logan Hudson, caught it just outside the end zone. He got blown up once he got in he there, yeah. but he hung on, and it is a touchdown for Foster to make it 30 to 16. And Lawson took a took a jolt there at the end. Or let's see. Yeah. Quarterback. Yeah. That's him, Lawson. Lawson, yeah, he, he got rid of it, and uh, I believe it was uh, Augustus who was bearing down on him, and just he was just late on it, 
What a pass by Lawson. Wow. And now Lopez on for the extra point. It's up. It's good. He's got a great leg. 30 to 17. And by the way, folks, we're going to jump right into our halftime. We know that we barely have enough time in the halftime break to give you all the uh, interview content with Josh LaRocca, 1994 Rice quarterback, and N.D. Kalu. And I'm going to repeat. Sorry for repeating. but Oh, if, you can repeat. I know what you, you're going to say. If you like nostalgic sports stories, you got to listen to this. This is Roger does a great job. Uh, his, his discussion with LaRocca. Is, is it's like they're having a little conversation and it's uh, so easy so easy to listen to and fun to listen to you're going to want to listen to it stay tuned you know we, we got 19 seconds to run off here first though he and i were little league dads his son owen is an outstanding athlete who is now playing college basketball at samford in georgia not stanford right samford yeah where and is that anyway? Where, what, a part, what part of Georgia? I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Not that I know the state very well, but I just wondered if it was by Atlanta. or. But they played against the Kansas Jayhawks in March Madness. What oh, a yeah. thrill to see yeah. your son play in the big dance. Awesome. All right, Lopez to kick off. And he angles it toward the far sideline, and it comes down to Fro. No, it's Mike Brown across the 30, oh, 35, oh. 40, 45, 50. He may go. Far sideline. He cuts back. Still going inside the 25 and out of bounds. Holy cow. And there are eight seconds remaining Jeez. on the clock. Just when you thought it was a halftime situation. What do we got over here, Roger? We got a big. You got a, up a guys one over purple there. jersey. Over there behind the Foster bench. I don't know what he's doing there. That's Jason McCurdy. No flags. I don't know what he was doing way over. I mean, he's at, he was at the bench. 10, was, 15 yards off the field there. I he was know. right in front of our beautiful Leonetti Graphics by Fortman.com you are right. banner. It's that orange sign. Yeah. I don't see a penalty marker. Do you? No. But they are having a discussion over here. Uh, the What's our referee's name again? I'm sorry. Mike Alsa Brooks. Alsa Brooks. He's uh, discussing it with a couple of the officials. Right now, it looks like it's going to be marked at about the, well, I don't know where it's going to be marked. Got a guy standing at the 29 with the ball. What would he be doing? <laughs> well, way over there. Was it a block and they just kept blocking him out? Or Well, they, they could have, you know, a couple of players might have just kind of ushered him behind their Big old water cooler. Yeah, and then there was, and then all of a sudden, all you saw was a bunch of white, white jerseys piled up. And here we're going to hear something here, maybe. Also, Brooke. And now look at the head coach for Folsher. He's way on the uh, hash. The He's Folsher on the far hash. hash. The what do you think he did? I mean, uh, it's a personal foul against Fulcher. He, as you said it, Roger, the lone purple uh, man over there, I, I don't know what he would have done. He might have gone over to one of the foster cheerleaders and asked one of them for a date. Oh, jeez. That's kind of a, uh, <laughs> that is a real faux pas if you ask me. Oh, my goodness, Roger. Well, that brings it, instead of having the ball near the 20 and a chance to score with eight seconds, they still have a chance to score, don't get me wrong, because they can score at any moment. But they got, uh, they're got they way back at their own 30, and I don't expect them to take a knee. I expect them to run a play. I wonder if uh, the coach for Fulcher, and I don't have his name. Uh, Nick Caduti? Caduti. I wonder if he was, do you think he was satisfied with the explanation he got? <laughs> Probably not. But I don't think so. He's got a 30-17 to 17 lead. But here's the other thing about that. I, I don't know. Can, are you allowed to run? All the way across the field like that as a coach? I don't know. That's interesting. Rolling to the right is Forks. He's going for it. He throws it near sideline, and it lands out of bounds, and there's, there's still time there's, on the clock. There's nobody there, though. I mean, There was nobody know. there, but he did get outside what would call would what we call so? the tackle box. Yeah, he rolled to the right. Okay, all right. And he fired it farther than the line of scrimmage. Yeah. So, so that's okay. And now we got a flag. Another flag. What happened there? It, it, it was, Literally yeah. eight, nine seconds. Okay, something's got to happen here, Roger. This is turning into 
This is absolutely ridiculous. Jackson Green is, uh, I would, uh, you know, he, he's guilty until proven, <laughs> I'm sorry, innocent until proven guilty, well. unless it's football, in which case if the official says you did it, well. you did it. Well, now that sets him up for a possible, you know, Hail Mary type pass. They're at the 45 yard line, their own. I don't know if he's got the arm, but you could do, do something here and make something happen. And the way Fulcher scores, I, I can't put anything past him in terms of how they might put some points on the board. From their own 45, final play of the half, Forks throws it out there to Chipman, and a flag comes in as he runs over Another to the left flag. side, and it's not Chipman, it's actually Braden Kennedy, multiple flags. Yeah, I, I just I hate to say what it could be possibly. There's a flag where the ball was thrown. Could it be a hold? Now they're both teams. Full Foster's just running off the field. <laughs> I don't know how they think they can run off the field without knowing the penalty here, but we don't even know what it is. Well, these officials are really uh, yeah, earning you, their money. I'll tell evening. you what I'd do, and I'm nev I've never repped a football game, but I would do... If I was also also bright, also Brooks, also Brooks. I'm sorry, I got to write that down. Sorry, Roger, that's not good on my part. But um, I would, before they go into the locker room, I would pull both captains or both head coaches, and I'd say this this is we got to clean this thing up. We're we're not gonna. There's been six, seven, eight unsportsmanlike type plays and late hits and all that. It's it's out of control here. Here's Mr. Alsa Brooks. Oh boy. Oh jeez. Can you believe that one? The offsetting offsetting penalties and I'll tell you Foster is lucky. They had two of the big penalties and then the holding was the uh, offsetter there. Okay, so wow. uh, no period can end on a defensive penalty unless it's declined. So I guess it's even if it's a defensive penalty that is part of an offsetting penalty right, right. situation. So here we go, an untimed down. And don't forget, immediately after this play, yes, we're going to have our big interview. Stay tuned. Forks throws it to Mike Brown. Near sideline and ushered out after a gain of less than 10 yards. And that'll do it for the first half. Patrick is saying, hold on. <laughs> just uh, get away. Just go to the just go to the locker room. <laughs> That's right. Okay. All right. We'll be back. It is 30 to 17. Fulcher on top of Foster. Rice Owl celebration coming up next. Lee Netty Graphics, the gold standard in Fort Bend County for screen printing, embroidery, banners, signs, t-shirts, and all kinds of specialty items. Whatever you need to advertise or show school spirit, team spirit, or company spirit, nobody does it better than Lee Netty Graphics. We started creating our products in an apartment 23 years ago, and now our state-of-the-art facility in Stafford has everything to make your vision come true. Call your friends at Lee Netty Graphics, 281-499-4959. Leonetti Graphics, the official banner provider for VipeFortBend.com. We're back at halftime on VipeFortBend.com, and we've been waiting a long time to do this. 30 years to be exact. No, that's not exactly accurate because we haven't been VipeFortBend.com for that long. But 30 years ago today, at least next week on the 16th, it'll be the 30-year anniversary of Rice defeating Texas in football it hasn't happened since, and prior to that, it had not happened for 29 years. And the quarterback for the Rice Owls is with us. Josh LaRocca was the quarterback who engineered that 1917 victory. And Josh, how often do you think about it if I'm not calling you to get you for an interview? <laughs> um, I won't lie. I think about it pretty regularly. Um, I, obviously, when Rice used to play Texas, on a yearly basis, it was always a, a good week for me to, to give me a, a confidence boost when people would call the newspaper or a television station. But uh, uh, that was certainly a special night in, in, for, for myself, but for Rice Athletics and, and, and Rice Football. Haven't had a lot of those in the last several years, so it's always, uh, it's always good to think back on, on one of those memories. 
Well, there was so much history to it because you had the JFK speech during the 1960 presidential campaign inside Rice Stadium said, why does Rice play Texas? And he used that as a metaphor to talk about the challenge of going to the moon. But it had been a while since Rice had beaten Texas and they, they didn't do it for a stretch of 29 years. Did anybody among the Rice alums who pat football players on the back and tell you how bad they want to win this one, did they hit you up before the game? No, not that, not not really. Uh, as you just mentioned, it had been 29 years, um, and so from that standpoint, I think most Rice people had given up hope by that chance, by that time of of ever beating Texas again. And so, um, as you said, we we certainly have heard that JFK speech on many occasions, and for those who played football, or Rice, we heard it all the time. And so, um, so yeah, definitely, uh, it was. Uh, it was one of those games that became a, a foregone conclusion, but for that year in 1994, uh, it was not a foregone conclusion. Now let's step, step aside a little bit away from the football and think about what was happening in 1994 in terms of pop culture. The two top movies of that year, one of which was kind of um, made for children, but adults loved it too, and it involved a jungle animal. Do you remember what movie that was? Man, I was going to say, you have a much better memory than I do. Oh, I, it's not my memory. I looked it up. <laughs> jungle animal, man. I uh, only think I, or maybe uh, 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 Lion King or... Exactly, or Josh. You hit it. Good uh, job. I was going to say Tarzan, but when you said animal, I was like, I got to go off Tarzan. But uh, all right, well, that's pretty good. I did not, I did not remember that. And there's one other movie that is a movie like no other. It's kind of like part fantasy, but part, if you just look at things simply and persevere, things can go well for you. Do you know what movie I'm talking about, Josh? Oh, oh good old Forrest Gump, huh? Yeah. Oh, wow, all right. Those are two legendary classic movies of all time. So, um, yeah, definitely. Forrest, uh, he played a little football in that movie as well, I think. He sure did, and he was playing for Alabama. And I remember Alabama, by the way, was in the Cotton Bowl, I think, in 1946, yeah. and a Rice player named Dickie Magel was just yeah. running wild, and a guy named Tommy Lewis jumped off the Alabama bench yeah. to tapple, tackle Magel about 50 yards from the yeah. goal line, but they gave him a touchdown yeah, 90, because he was sprinting away. Yeah, 95-yard touchdown run. So, yeah, definitely. That is uh, that lives in the, the legends of Rice. Dickie Magel is a legend of Rice football, so uh, certainly well aware of, of that play you mentioned, no doubt about it. Now, there's one other thing that I was thinking about that happened in 1994. It was the debut of a very popular show where one of the beloved actors in that show is a hilarious show. Uh, well, he passed away in 2023, and I'll bet you know what I'm talking about. Mm, no, I don't. Oh, Friends, I guess. Exactly. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no doubt about that. So, um, yeah, that was sad to see Matthew Perry pass away. Um, you're talking about unique things. I guess the one thing that I do remember about the game, and you may have, I may be beating you to the punch, but uh, um, the, the very unique thing about our game was it was played on a Sunday night mm -hmm. um, during the baseball strike. Um, there was no other sporting event that was televised that evening. Uh, we were supposed to pl originally play on Saturday. The game was moved to Sunday evening. And so we had prime time air ESPN that evening, uh, no other sporting events. And so I think we even got uh, that many more eyeballs on, on Rice football that evening. And luckily we did something, did something special. So what you're talking about is one of the reasons this game was the perfect storm. And we'll tell you what that metaphor means when we return. Vibefortbend.com halftime with Josh LaRocca, the Rice quarterback back in 1994. We'll be right back. It's fall, y'all. Head over to First Tire and Automotive for a free tire pressure and tread depth check. There's a store right around the corner from you in the Sugar Land area. First Tire and Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. A full synthetic oil change to $60. Oh, my. And more savings on the website. 
Book your appointment today at firsttireandauto.com. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive, Ford's convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. All right, we're back with Josh LaRocca, whom I've known for a long time, mainly because his son was in Sugarland Little League. And my son, Wesley, was on your son, Owen's team at the very beginning, I believe, a team called the Marlins, and we actually won the championship. We did. We did. Uh, we go back a long time. Roger, you and I have known each other for, uh, geez, I'm trying to think, how old is my son now? Uh, it's been a long time, and, uh, yeah, we did have some pretty good Little League teams back in the day. And Jordan Verge, a great athlete for Kempner, was on that particular team. So it was wonderful. Also, um, uh, 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 Brandon Fegley, yeah, sure. our, our friend Lance's son. That was that was a great collection of talent. Yeah, definitely. We had some good years through that little league uh, and had a lot of good talent come through that little league. Uh, even though we were small, we still had a lot of good talent that that played there each and every year. And give us a quick update on your son Owen's baseball career. Sure. No, I appreciate you asking. Basketball, that is. Um, so, I'm sorry. I, 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 he was so multi-talented, I, I guess I thought he had gone yeah, uh, no, he, baseball. Uh, he played both basketball and baseball growing up and uh, uh, kind of evolved into basketball uh, in high school. And um, uh, he went to Sanford University, so he plays, uh, plays on the basketball team at Sanford. Um, he is in his fourth year, and so he's in his final year at, at Sanford. He'll graduate in the spring, and, uh, um, you know, he's, they've had some really good teams the last few years. Last, this past season, we had a chance to go to the tournament, uh, the dance, uh, which was awesome. As a, you know, for me, as a father, you know, I grew up watching the NCAA tournament from every year for, for 30, 40 years, and so to see your son – be uh, be a part of that and, and get a play against a blue blood like Kansas was uh, was was quite a special a special moment. All right, so I want to. You probably don't even remember this conversation, but I hope I didn't get out, off on the wrong foot when I met you because I asked you about a guy named Shea Morenz, who happened to be the Texas quarterback when the Rice Owls beat the Longhorns, and I also kind of looked into it a little bit deeper, and I remembered back when I was doing TV sports in San Angelo. There was an early season game where your team, San Antonio Clark and San Angelo Central, played to a tie. Yes, they used to play to ties in Texas high school football. Do you remember anything about that game, and did you shake hands with Shea, make acquaintance in any way at that time? Yeah, I do remember that game. Um, uh, for some reason, I just remember getting a lot of uh, – uh, media attention from San Angelo before that game. It was a high school game, but uh, at the time, obviously, Shea was highly regarded and highly recruited. Um, I think maybe one of the you know top quarterbacks in the nation. Um, and um, in San Antonio Clark, where I went to high school, we always traditionally had a had a you know very good football team. And so it's kind of one of those early season non district clashes of, uh, I guess I could say, two top quarterbacks in the state. Absolutely. And, and uh, like you said, uh, it was a hard-fought battle, but uh, little did we know that, that the two of us would, uh, would lock horns, no pun intended, I guess, uh, a few years later. Well, Shea, he had such potential. Uh, it was amazing. The people that actually came to San Angelo, uh, I happened to meet Bobby Bowden and Bill Walsh wow. just because of Shea. Now, it didn't work out. He had a knee injury in his football career. James Brown kind of eclipsed him, became the Longhorns' main man at quarterback. Shea tried professional baseball, and he got to the AAA level, never really got to where he could hit the curveball, and it just didn't work out. I've been looking for an opportunity to, to find him and talk to sure. him someday. But um, in that game, I guess we ought to move on to, the, to what actually happened in the game between Rice and Texas October 16th. 1994 you mentioned that it was on a sunday night because of the baseball strike and espn had to put something on and what better game than that but what was the weather like prior to the game and during the game uh, a lot of rain needless to say uh, a bunch of rain uh it was a 
It was a steady rainfall. Now, if you if you if you go back and you start looking at the tall tales that came from that game, 30 years later, it was a monsoon. You know, it was a hurricane. Uh, but uh, but I do. I mean, from a serious note, it, we did have a steady uh, steady rain throughout the game. And then actually after the game is when it really opened up and flooded the city. But, uh, yeah, it was definitely, you, you know, you, you practice the wet ball drill during practice and hope you don't have to deal with it. But that game, we definitely had to deal with it all night long. The Longhorns dropped a whole bunch of passes. I also didn't remember this part, but they had several suspended players, yeah. including a great receiver named Lavelle Pinckney. Yeah. And I just remember the Longhorns dropping passes all over the place. And we'll talk passing statistics from the game when we return with Josh LaRocca, the Rice quarterback, back in 1994. And it seems like it's only appropriate he should never, ever again have to go to Rice Village and pay for whatever beer he might order. We'll be right back. VibeFortBend.com. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through September 21st, get fast, reliable Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Actual speeds vary. So we go back to the rainy night, 1994, October the 16th. So Texas is playing Rice, and Josh LaRocca's statistics were three passes completed in seven attempts, but two of them were for touchdowns. No, exactly. It's, uh, I, I think about that, and, and uh, I shake my head throwing se only seven passes in a football game as a quarterback. But, uh, but, yeah, a little background on that. That was the, our first year with Coach Ken Hatfield, who had come in and implemented the wishbone offense, um, which for me as a, as a drop-back quarterback was definitely a, a culture shock, but uh, tried to adapt to it as quickly as I could. Uh, I could run fast. I was certainly not a triple option quarterback running that fast, but uh, we had very good success with it. and, and uh, Clearly, we had a really good season that year, and, and uh, you know, preparing for the triple option is, is almost impossible in a one-week span, and so certainly we took advantage of that. Uh, you mentioned the drop passes. You mentioned suspended players. I think the other thing that I remember still 30 years later is that nobody, nobody really talked, talked about it, but the week before, Texas had played Oklahoma, and they had beat Oklahoma on the final play, I think Stony Case was a defensive lineman, made a game-saving tackle at the one-yard line. And I just remember that after that game, thinking that they were going to be so high and obviously would overlook us that we had a little bit more of an advantage on top of some of the other advantages that you mentioned going into that game. And, and certainly, I think that, that played a part to it. Now, you followed Bertie Manuel as sure. the Rice quarterback. Well, actually, yeah, go ahead. I was you were, he was before you or you before, before him? him. Yeah. Okay. Before and after, actually. Um, so he, he transferred in uh, my true freshman year. Um, and then my true sophomore year, I started. He backed me up. I broke my collarbone in the second game of the season. He took over and ran with the team for that season. And then the following season, he started. I backed him up, and then he graduated. So, so yeah, we, we backed each other up and played together. Um, obviously, Bert went on to do great things in the NFL as a receiver. Uh, I wish he would have maybe played receiver for me, but, uh, but no, yeah, certainly. So uh, you, but you wouldn't call what happened with uh, you and Bert kind of uh, going back and forth as the starting quarterback. That really wasn't a quarterback controversy. No, not at all. I mean, I think um, you know I, I came off a fairly successful, uh, true freshman season and had a really good spring. 
uh, won the starting position, um, and then you know got hurt in the second season, uh, a second game of the season. He came in and had a phenomenal remainder of the season, and so kind of was uh, obvious that he would come in as a starter in the next season and did that, and, and I backed him up that year, and then he graduated, went to the pros, and then uh, I had two more seasons, which that following year was the 94 season, um, which is what we're talking about tonight. And you mentioned that that Texas game where they defeated Oklahoma. Shea had messed up his knee in a game against Colorado where they ended up losing on a field goal on the final play. Uh, Rashawn Salam was the stud running back for Colorado. And Brown comes in and leads the Longhorns to the win over Oklahoma. And quarterback controversies, if they don't really affect someone that you care about, are no big deal. It's like, oh, well, that's just the way the game goes. But I noticed... Later on, after the loss to Rice, the Longhorns are playing at home, and you know how one side of the stadium in Austin says Texas, and the other side yells fight? Well, they were going, Texas, and the other side yelled, James Brown. Oh, really? And I was just thinking, man, I feel terrible for Shea, you know. Uh, as the great Tom Petty said, uh, uh, something about, some say life will beat you down, break your heart, and steal your crown. Well, that was brutal. Yeah, Shea, uh, Shea took a, 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 a verbal beating in his career at Texas. Unfortunately, he was a, uh, certainly an, an amazing talent, excellent quarterback. Um, you know, you see that all the time nowadays, but you didn't see it maybe as much back in the day. Although at the University of Texas, that's commonplace, you know, especially if you're going to be a quarterback at Texas, you're going to have to deal with uh, – with the alumni and uh, the famous alumni at the University of Texas. Uh, many people have gone up against them and failed. So, um, but yeah, it, um, it, it was definitely a challenging, I think, uh, period for him uh, trying, to, trying to be successful and deal with them at the same time. Okay, we're going to take one more quick break, come back with Josh LaRocca. We've got to leave time for N.D. Kalu. He's waiting in the wings on VibeFortBend.com. We are the volleyball school with three locations, Katy, the Woodlands, and our newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to get on the top club and school teams, and you'll have fun doing it. Our Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. Okay, so during that game, Rice against Texas, Josh LaRocca throws two touchdown passes. You missed the extra point after one of them. You didn't. Your teammate did. Do you remember your teammate's name? Because he kicked two field goals in the game that ended up being the margin of victory, 1917. Oh, you're going to put me on the spot. It was either two. It was either Johnny Bagwell or Adam Hulesman, maybe? Hulesman, yeah, exactly yeah, right. Good remember, job. Couldn't remember who, who kicked that night. Uh, I knew it was one of the two. Those were the two kickers during my time at Rice. But, uh, uh, yeah, Adam was uh, – uh, he had a, quite a strong leg. Um, but, uh, yeah, kicked, kicked obviously a couple big field goals that night for us. And kicking a wet ball is yeah, very definitely. difficult. By the way, I've never – known of anyone, you know, uh, athlete, school, uh, student at school, nobody with the last name Hulesman. Yeah. So it's amazing that you remember that. So either you haven't started forgetting things or even <laughs> taking your Prevagen. Uh, I'm starting to forget things, unfortunately. So um, I've, I've passed the, the 50 age mark. So it's I'm going downhill from there. But uh, but when you talk, start talking about sports, that's the one thing I do have a pretty good memory about. And uh, um, certainly when you're talking about October 16th, 1994, I have a pretty good memory on that night. All right. So N.D. Kalu is going to join us next Anything that you remember in particular about him as a teammate? You played offense, he played defense, but uh, any ND stories from his college days? Yeah, ND was a, a good friend of mine, an amazing football player, just a complete stud on the field. Um, our rivalry, well, not rivalry, Rice, but our, our relationship went back to high school. We both grew up in San Antonio, uh, played on opposing teams, opposing rival teams in the same district. Um, I will say that I 
I beat him in high school. So I, I've maybe got that on him, although he went to much bigger and brighter, brighter things in the NFL. So um, I, I'll trade him. I'll trade him if I could. Um, you, you were San Antonio Clark. He was San Antonio what? Marshall. Marshall. Yeah, and uh, had some battles. We were very uh, massive rivals back in the back in the 80s and 90s. Uh, in San Antonio football, and and, uh, and so yeah, um, like I said, uh, obviously Indy was a um, just a stud on the field, um, uh, made a difference every single game we played in. Especially, certainly that night, our defense played out of their minds. That night, I think Indy had. I know he had two sacks because I know he had back-to-back sacks on two plays. And probably had a few more that evening as well. And certainly uh, one of the reasons we were successful that night in that season um, where we ended up, you know, what, five-way tie for the, for the Southwest Conference Championship the year uh, A&M was on probation. Okay, and finally, uh, got to let you go, and thanks for yeah, spending sure. so much time with me. Do you remember vividly how big the crowd was? And there's so many UT alums in the Houston area I presume there were more Longhorn fans than Owls fans. Is that right? Even though it was a home game for you? Yeah, no doubt about it. You were talking about uh, free beer and, and, and rice. You, unfortunately, not many people rem- remember me in the rice community. Maybe the the, the sports supporters, but I, I will always say, and I have always said it, there is probably thousands and thousands of more UT alumni that remember Josh LaRocca's name than they rem- than they do at, at, at Rice University. So uh, definitely a huge crowd that night. I do probably the one thing I remember uh, after the game is, is just some of the older Rice alum coming up to me with tears in their eyes of, of just celebration and, and joy that we had, we had, we had not only beat them, we physically handled them that night. And, you don't say that much about Rice against Texas. So it was, uh, it was one of those awesome nights in, in Rice football history. That is special. I, I like pro football, but when it comes to college and high school football, it's about the love. You know, Rice is not where you went to school. It's part of who you are. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, I mean, obviously, it'll live with me forever. Uh, that evening, uh, my five years playing football at Rice, Rice University, uh, the relationships that I made uh, through those times, and uh, you know, one of those is with Indy, who you're, you're about to talk to. Um, yeah, certainly, as I always say, I get way more credit for going to Rice than I probably deserve. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, certainly a great university. All right. Thank you very much, Josh. It's been a great visit. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Roger. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me on. All right. We are your one and only broadcast home for Fort Bend County High School Sports. We'll be right back with N.D. Kalu. Lee Netty Graphics, the gold standard in Fort Bend County for screen printing, embroidery, banners, signs, T-shirts, and all kinds of specialty items. Whatever you need to advertise or show school spirit, team spirit, or company spirit. Nobody does it better than Leonetti Graphics. We started creating our products in an apartment 23 years ago, and now our state-of-the-art facility in Stafford has everything to make your vision come true. Call your friends at Leonetti Graphics, 281-499-4959. Leonetti Graphics, the official banner provider for VipeFortBend.com. All right, welcome back to halftime. If you just joined us, We've been looking ahead to the celebration for everybody who loves Rice University. On Wednesday, it'll be the 30-year anniversary of the night they beat the Texas Longhorns in Rainy Rice Stadium. We appreciate Josh LaRocca for joining us. And now one of his teammates on that Rice Owls team on the defensive side. You know him well, N.D. Kalu. And uh, N.D., what immediate memories do you have of that, that night? It was a rainy Sunday night. Just the victory and the celebration. I don't even remember the rain until the mainly the UT fans uh, remind us that uh, it was inclement weather. But you know, just a special night. Of, you know, something that no one expected for us to be able to do, and for us to be able to do it, uh, it, it was just special. But I, I just remember the feeling afterwards uh, when we knew that we secured that victory. And I'll take a quick little aside here and ask you about your family. You've got multiple sons, I believe a nephew, playing great on the defensive front for the Ridgepoint Panthers, and your daughter, India, is an outstanding volleyball player. Give us a rundown on your family and those who are still pursuing the athletic dream. 
appreciate you bringing that up. So, uh, yes, uh, my oldest son, uh, DK, he plays at Baylor. Uh, he just finished his first year at Baylor. He redshirted, no tackle. Uh, then my other son, he was a uh, junior at Fort Bend Christian. He just turned 16. And like you mentioned, my daughter's off in Coffeeville, Kansas, uh, pursuing her volleyball uh, dream. So definitely uh, the athletic gene kind of, uh, you, you know, spread out to the whole family. And I always love those Fort Bend connections. So DK is now going to be teammates with Mason Dossett, yep. another one of those sons of NFL dads that played for the Panthers. Not just teammates at Baylor. They were teammates at Rich Point. <laughs> so, well, that's what I'm saying. That, yeah. You know, it's Rich Point is full of NFL dads. Yeah, yeah, and uh, NFL dads, college dads, and the kids are kind of like taking up the, the torch, and they're doing great jobs with it. Mason, I mean, I can't say enough about Mason Dawson with what he did on the track, what he's doing on the football field. And then you have uh, Bethel Roman, you, you know, what he's doing at Texas A&M. There's just so much talent in that little Fort Bend area. It's amazing. All right, so back to the game where Rice beat Texas. The final score was 19 to 17. And I know it's been forever ago, you know, 30 years. That's crazy. And you may not remember that much about it, but when you and your team found out that it would be a Sunday night game instead of the normal Saturday night, and it was going to be on national TV, pretty much the only thing to watch on sports that evening because of the baseball strike. Uh, do you remember any reaction to that among your teammates? You know, it, it was weird. It was just one of those things. And I do remember it like it was yesterday because it was such a special event, special evening. But I do remember when we found out that it was going to be on Sunday and there was no other sporting event going on, if I'm not mistaken, whether it's baseball, basketball, other football games. So we, we just knew like something special was brewing. I looked at a replay of that or at least a, a YouTube, several clips of it. And I remember you got multiple sacks on Shea Morenz, and my history with him goes way back. I used to live in San Angelo, and when he was playing high school football, I think he was the best high school quarterback I had seen to that day. Anything, any impressions that you remember about Shea, any weaknesses that you wanted to exploit? You know, not weaknesses in his game. I mean, like you mentioned, I believe he was the number one recruit coming out of the state, if not the country, at the quarterback position. Just, I mean, that whole team was stacked. Lavelle Pinkney, my former high school teammate, Priest Holmes, uh, Brock Meyer, I mean, Dan Neal. They, they just had so many studs on that team. So it wasn't just about that quarterback. But to be able to sack Shea Morans and knowing in high school I was reading about him and, and how great he was, it, it was definitely special. And you know something else, that was going to be my next question, but I think we'll, we're will we going to have to end the interview here pretty soon. But I was thinking about Priest Holmes, and later that year, Texas played North Carolina in the Sun Bowl, and I was living in El Paso. And so Mac Brown at the time is the coach of the Tar Heels, and Priest Holmes leaps over the goal line in the last two minutes to score the winning touchdown. Was there anybody else besides the guys you listed a moment ago, besides Priest Holmes and, and Lavelle Pinkney and those others, anybody else that moved on to play pro ball? There was one guy, and you know, football players, they don't like to admit when they are amazed by their peers. But UT had a defensive end that even though we're the same age, I, find, I found myself in awe of him. And I'm talking about Tony Brackens. I mean, that was a guy when he was up on the field, instead of sitting down getting my water, I was a fan. I was on the sideline watching him do what he does. So Tony Brackens is definitely a guy that sticks out. All right, Indy, it's always good to talk to you. I, I miss hearing you on the radio, but I know you have so many activities and professional pursuits that uh, – you had to kind of get rid of one to, to be able to do the great job that you want to do at all of those things. Anything that you want to tell our listeners that you're working on right now? Uh, you, you know, I'm just doing my real estate business, and that's kind of why I stopped doing the day-to-day -day radio. But I'm still uh, thank, thankful for the Texans. They bring me in to do some broadcasting and keep me close to the game. So, you know, if you see me, just know that I appreciate everything that's been given to me. And I hope you're feeling good. You know, whenever someone played football for a long time, um, I've had a chance to, to visit with you a few times. A lot of these guys are old friends I've never met, and I always ask how they're doing. Are you feeling good in the knees and the ankles and the hips and stuff? In comparison, I feel pretty good when I hear the stories of the guys that I played with, played against. Uh, you know, you're always going to have those pains when you play 12 years in the NFL, four years college ball and, you know, high school. So, But I'm thankful for the way I feel right now. 
All right. All the best, ND. Th don't be a stranger. We appreciate you being with us. Y'all keep up the great work. I mean, y'all do a great job uh, keeping everybody up to date with what's going on in high school football, past, present, and the future. So I appreciate what y'all are doing. Love high school sports. Never get tired of it. It makes awesome adults out of all these kids that get involved in it. Thank you, ND. Kalu, we'll be back. This is VibeFortBend.com. And we're already back, and that was such a good halftime that we let it go into overtime by about a minute. Fulcher kicked off to start the third quarter, and they recovered an onside kick. Surprise, surprise. And now they hand it off to Patrick Broadway, running to the right, and he takes it from his team's, or the uh, Foster Falcons, 46-yard line, down to the 42, a four-yard pickup. And, you know, it was an amazingly executed onside kick. I'm sure you saw it, Patrick. Sincere Helton of Foster did everything he could. He just gathered it in and wrapped two arms around the football, but he was hit so hard that the ball came out. The, the hit was perfectly timed, and so Fulcher is marching already. Second down and four to go, and they hand it off to Broadway. A flag comes in, penalty marker down, but Broadway goes all the way to the 25-yard line. If it stands, it'll be a 15-yard pickup but I think it's coming back. Well, the way they, with the position of the flag looks like it's gonna come back. <laughs> 30 to 17. The Fulcher Chargers are in command and if Foster had been able to maintain position on uh, possession on the kickoff to begin the third quarter I think they'd be in really good shape they but now yeah. Fulcher has the football but this penalty will help the foster cause yeah marches them back to midfield stripe and I interrupted our well we referee. I thought Sorry. he was about to say something and he didn't no I don't think you interrupted he was doing the Charlie Chaplin routine Second down and 14 from the 50-yard line. And Fulcher keeps it on the ground. Broadway over the right side. Rumbles down to the 42. And he went over the top of the tackler, Josh L. Ivy. You know, I guess they say, get your pads below that of whoever you're taking on. Yep. And it ends up being third down and six. After that 10-yard carry, the ball is at the 42. They need to take it down to the 36 to get a first down. We're on the first possession of this third quarter. Ryland Forks hands it off, going right. Broadway, very familiar play, but this time Foster is ready. And they usher him out of bounds into the bench full of purple jersey players. And everybody is keeping their composure this time, Patrick. <laughs> Jackson Green. Went all the way around a whole bunch of Fulcher Chargers, and they were they, they were being altar boys. They were polite, hands uh, on on their hips, and uh, no scurrying that time. But we're, so that was no game. Now it's fourth and six, and I yeah. think they're going for it. Yeah, no game. That's not a surprise that they're going for it. Forks. Keeps it, rolling to the left, looking to pass. Now he's going to keep it, running for the stick, and Whoa. I think he got there. Where was the knee down, though? He I'd... stuck the ball out before the knee came down. I think they're, wait a minute, no. no they I'd... did mark him short. Well, I think his. I think he went out of bounds. His foot was out of bounds before he stretched it out there, I think. And at least the guy down there, uh, the, the linesman, was right there. And yeah, he could not have been in better position. Yeah. And he made a very decisive call. So Foster has held. And they're only down 30 to 17. And now they have the football. The chain gang is, uh, they're up the field too far. There yeah. they go. There they go. They, they got it corrected here. <laughs> Big stop by the Falcons. Wow. And Lawson is in at quarterback. And he hands it off on the first play. And the Fulcher defense is equal to the task right up the middle, but Evan Ferns knocked the feet out from under the running back. And it amounts to not very much. In fact, one yard gain, second down and nine. Did you see who carried that? I should have been paying better attention to that. I did not see. The, uh, I was just gonna say that Fulcher 
really has, did a pretty good job in the first half. They moved the ball fairly well. Three receivers in the pattern. And a handoff straight up the middle. And again, it is a wall of purple jerseys and just nowhere for the running back to go. That's Akinbele. Sorry about that. Well, one of the players in there was Logan Hudson making the tackle along with some interior linemen. I would imagine uh, one of those guys was uh, Ch Chance Bryant. Stuffed the athlete. There. Yeah, the athlete. By the on, way, on Logan the Hudson is really good at jumping routes on shallow slants. You better watch out so for that. So if Foster throws, they should throw it down the field to Daniel Humphrey. Don't throw it where Logan Hudson can jump the route and grab it. Third down and nine, Lawson far sideline looking for Humphrey, and the ball is knocked away, but a flag comes in. I, I it's gonna be defensive pass interference. Jerome Drain is getting called for it. I think it was a good call. He uh, he was kind of riding the receiver. He kind of had some contact, and he never turned back, so uh, it's hard to tell way up here, but it looked like he was uh, kind of riding him down the field there. All right, Humphrey hopped off the field on one foot because his right leg was cramping. I think he's going to be fine. He almost caught it despite the interference. And of course, the Holster crowd uh, didn't like the call, but I, to me, it looked like a pretty good call. All right, so the 15-yard penalty gives Foster a first down at the Fulcher 47. They are moving right to left, that is west to east in this third quarter. Spread formation, Lawson. Turns around and hands it off to Akinbele, trying to get past the line of scrimmage, and he does, but only by one yard, and Asher Jacob had him securely wrapped up. I would, uh, I think I need to take a class on how to mark a football because several times it, it appears that the runner goes a little bit further than where they mark it. That time it looked like he picked up a yard, but they called it no gain. Maybe his, I guess his knee went down earlier than I thought. Yeah, I'm always spotting the football with what I say, and I end up being off by a yard so often. Second down and 10, man goes in motion, fake to Akinbele, Lawson. He scrambles left, but Logan Hudson says, you're not going anywhere, Colonel. And he did not go anywhere, he lost. About That's 10 yards on that play. Well, not quite 10, not 10. but uh, let's see. Uh, seven. Seven yards. Third down and 17 coming. Logan Hudson, really good baseball player. So is Jametta. We already mentioned that. And there's a, a player who was on the Fulcher football team and baseball team last year, Ty Powell, who has decided to go strictly baseball. They're going to have a really good baseball team. Third down and 17. Lawson drops back, and he's sacked again. Back inside his own 35. Guess who that was? Well, Augustus finished it off, but the guy who got there first was number 54, and I don't have a 54 on my roster. Or is it 59? Well, I think that's Chance. Well, you may be right. Yeah, you Chance are right. Bryant, yeah. It's Chance Bryant. Sorry about that, Chance. It did look like a four there when you kind of... I didn't give you a, uh, don't, don't cover for me. I, I blew it. <laughs> I dropped it. Lopez sits down. Did you see that? He's in punt formation, well, and then he just sat down. Now what happened was I think he, he did a practice kick, and I think he lost his balance. Okay. He fell on his backside. Well, he there. really followed through with that <laughs> right leg. But he hopped up quick. Will Fulcher try to rush this punt? Well, we get contact before the snap. Well, they're both pointing at each other. Well, even if it's against Fulcher, it will be no harm done, really. No, it, it will, Just would, five yards, five for, yards farther deep. forward. I think they call it offside against Fulcher. Just gives them a little extra room to punt it. Not that they need a lot of room, but uh, field position. Marched off five yards against Fulcher. I guess the left end, what are they doing there? <laughs> That's We've a got five the yard ball. penalty, and he was, <laughs> he kept going. Rogers measuring the field with his right hand. It was an 11 yard loss on the sack. Okay. So now it's fourth down and 22, I think. Lopez gets it out of there. Fulcher really didn't rush it. And it bounces up and Mike Brown lets Ooh. it go. 
Keeps on rolling. Good foster punt. Wow. Inside the 10, dying at the 7. How many yards did that roll? That 25 yards roll, I think. Let's see, least. we got uh, 43 plus 9 is 52. 52 yard punt with, uh, and by the way, Charles Gabbard, athletic director of LCISD, is out there putting a new battery in Mike Alsabrook's power pack. Because we have not that, heard him. We haven't been hearing him announce plays. And Mr. Exactly. Gabbard, he's got to do this like a NASCAR pit crew yeah. and do it quickly. But I guess Mr. Alsabrooks will probably say, just wait, wait, wait. Don't Looks run like a play there's yet. There's a penalty marker down there. Too. There is a penalty marker. Oh, boy. Boy, they had him pinned back inside the 10. And that penalty is going to give uh, Fulcher breathing room close to the 20, 25 yard line. That's got to be at least three unsportsmanlikes per team, I think. So that awesome punt gets 15 yards chopped off of it. It's like a 15 yard return. Yeah, it's like a 37 yard kick net. with no return yeah, or net. a 52 yard punt <laughs> with a 15 yard hey, return. I was going to tell the listeners at halftime, great halftime show for both teams and there were no penalties called. No penalties. Yeah, that's right. It was a good halftime. Unless we hear from the UIL during the week, no penalties against the bands. <laughs> All right, running to the right, it is Mike Brown. Uh -oh. Gets to the edge outside the numbers, Woo! and he's blasted as he goes out of bounds. But after a 10-yard run for a first down, and Ivy got him. <laughs> he sure did give him a shoulder as he went out of bounds. But you're going to take a, a little hit from anybody if you've got an 11-yard gain. I'll take that. If you're the runner, and on Fulcher's sending in the plays, they got four guys giving the signals, and one of them's got the right signal. By the way, I want to say thank you to Callie Smith, not only for the Countdown to Kickoff show interview, but that interview would not have come off if she hadn't given me some cough drops. There you I go. forgot mine. That's nice. All right, running to the left is Broadway, given ground, following his blockers. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage and dumped for a loss of one, There's and a, it's Ivy again. There's another penalty marker. It could be a hold from where it was thrown. Now they've got uh, a couple of guys down at the point of tackle. All right, Patrick, I am going to see if we can track down some football scores. How about that? That's a good time to do it. we got one player down for the Falcons at about the 34. He's sitting up. It's a cramp situation as he's being stretched out there. Will we hear uh, Mike also Brooks here announce this penalty? Let's see if we can hear him in, uh, on this point. We know the battery works now. Well, we're going to find out if the battery works. Well, he already him? gave that. That yeah, remember you're the right. Sports you're right. conduct. Yeah, we, we heard that loud and clear. Yes. Yeah, so let's see if we can hear this one. It'll be either second down and about 13 or first and 20. Let's see what he. Well, he's still trying to figure it out. A lot of people are talking. That's a, yeah, that would only be a five-yard penalty, so you don't take that one. You're, uh, you already took him for a loss on the play, so it'll be second down in, looks like 12 yards to go for the Chargers. By the way, out at Tully Stadium in West Houston, Cy Fair leading the Memorial Mustangs 20 to 13. That game is in the third quarter. Sounds like a good game. Well, Mustangs got off to a rough start, but now that district's play district play has started, they are a formidable team. Looks like it's going to be just a one yard loss. It'll be second and 11. Second down and 11 for the Fulshill Chargers and Ryland Forks, their sophomore quarterback under center. Takes the snap, hands it off to Zane Smith, running left. Turns it up near the numbers and picks up five. He had his <laughs> legs knocked out from underneath him by Jalen Green. What are what happened to make well, people well, stumble all over each other well, number, after the play? Uh, Ojuku <clears throat> fell backwards with his arms in the air. I think he was trying to sell a, a flop, a fl <laughs> some sort of a hit, but a pretty good tackle there to get uh, Zane Smith down. Third down and six, one back in the backfield. And it's a toss sweep, that is Broadway coming to the near side, gets outside the numbers, 
Following his blockers near the sideline, near midfield, and goes out of bounds with a first down. That's a first down. Think of First Tyrant Automotive for all the car care needs. Check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. Caden Bateman and Addison Ojaku combining for the tackle, but it gives the Chargers a first down at the 48 of the Falcons. I do like these, these plays. Very simple. Little pitch to the right. And he's got, they just outnumber you out there with the blockers, and they do a really good job of getting out there ahead of their runners. Same formation, same and they play. toss it to the near side. Same play, different runner, and out of bounds near the 40 at the 39 yard line. It's a nine yard pickup, and the first carry of the game for Caden Bean. Yep. Mr. Bean. He, uh, just a, well, he's a junior. They, uh, they, they did a, they ran the same play that they ran the, the play before, and they send up blockers ahead of them, and another first down. They're just telling you, we're going to run more people at you than you have out there. And they're even sometimes telling you where they're going to run. Yeah, they, there's a third time in a row, same play. Broadway sweeping, first down, and more keeps going inside the 20, still inbounds, all the way! That was a heck of a run. What wow. a run. I can't believe he stayed in bounds. He, that last 15 yards was all him. 39-yard touchdown, and it just looked kind of harmless. Oh, they'll bump him out. But he kept on going, and you hear that sound effect. I, I kind of like that, you know, the big. <laughs> like the horse? Yes, the it's charger. one of the hardest animals to impersonate. Well, I think you did a, a pretty good job. There. Oh, you're being too kind. All right, Mr. Bean is in the backfield behind Ryland Forks as they go for two. Toss sweep, there goes Bean. Finds a crease, but he is bulldogged down. Does not make it. Nice play, open field tackle, Caden Bateman. But they've upped the ante. It is 36 to 17. 3.47 to go in quarter number three on VibeFortBend.com. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while well, their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through September 21st, get fast, reliable Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless bill and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Actual speeds vary. Ready for the onside kickoff. <laughs> well, seems like there's a good chance we might see one. And I've given up trying to name who's going to kick the football. There are several chargers who are going to run at it, which I guess is good. You keep the other team guessing. And it's kind of a pop-up kick. And it checks up and picked up at the 22-yard line. Foster gets a nine-yard return. The flag is down, but Jack Den Herder was the one that brought it back. And I did do some research on him, Patrick. And Vern Den Herder of the 1970s Dolphins is no relation to Jack Den Herder of Foster. He's a good multi-sport athlete, plays baseball. I wish we'd have been keeping track of the number of penalties in this game. It's uh, we've got to be approaching 20. By the way, this is our rivalry game and our final Tuesday night volleyball regular season broadcast will be Foster versus Fulcher. <laughs> What a surprise, Patrick. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, I think this is the 
I don't think I've ever seen a game with this many unsportsmanlike conducts. I think we've had at least eight. By the way, there it looks like that's a, a Randall Lions football player. Yeah. I will be seeing him tomorrow. Well, 11 a.m. kickoff as the Lions be, take on Texas City. He should be home in bed. Well, yeah, maybe so. If the game started at 2, I'd say it would be okay. Right now, I'm sure he's fine. He can't be a sub-varsity athlete. He's got a letter jacket. Yeah. His last name is Thomas. Coach Randall, are you listening? Yeah, I was wondering if you're going to give it away. All right. First and 10 from the 39, and it's a handoff straight up the middle, and these running backs for Foster is going to have a lot of uh, bruises. Oscar Vargas carries for two. And, by the way, they put... Riley Blanton in at quarterback. They've been shuffling him and Lawson in and out. Yep, it's been, uh, as I said, it, it, the score is 36 to 17, but it just doesn't seem that way. I think Foster has shown a pretty good job of hanging in there tonight. I, I really think they were probably very, very angry about the way they were manhandled last year and they wanted to have a better performance. And they have. Blanton throws it, sideways pass, and making a move toward the sideline and getting most of what he needed. Langston Hogan, he's a tall drink of water, a very talented receiver. That's his first catch. And he gains six out to the 45 at second and four. That's actually third and four. The first play was a two-yard game. Okay, thank you. Third um, and four after the four-yard game. Yes. Um, I had a comment on that, and uh, I just it just slipped up, slipped my mind. I, I guess that's a good thing. Well, you can say that after this play because I know it's going to come back to you. Third down and four, and a keeper. There goes Blanton. He's got the first down. Nice move, and he's yanked out of bounds. Jerome Drain got a hold of his jersey and kind of sat him down. Actually, that's not Jerome Drain. Sorry about that. It's Eamon Eddie Alley. I know Seven, I, not nine. I know what I was going to say. That's two plays in a row now, Roger. Mark it. Two plays in a row without a penalty. Hey! Let's see if we can go for three. That was a good play. They faked the handoff inside. The quarterback kept it, and he had a lot of good room to the right side. Blanton, he showed a pretty good footwork and speed with his feet there, and they've marched into Fulcher territory. Kyle Morris is the single receiver on the near side of the formation. First and 10 from the Fulcher 48, oh. and a high snap. Blanton's got to chase it back to about his 32-yard line and fall on it. That's a shame. It is. The unforced error and a big loss. That's a 20-yard 20, 20 loss. Oh, oh, boy. Second and 30 coming up. That, that hurts. Yeah, what, what play you got for second and 30, Roger? Throw it to Daniel Humphrey. There you go. And throw it deep. Yeah. Don't dink it over the middle or Logan Hudson will intercept it. Oh boy, that, that's, those are tough tough to take because Blanton had really no chance. I think when that ball was snapped, he started running back backwards right away to go chase it down and he did a good job of just falling on it. Otherwise it could have been a turnover. Five wide receivers and an empty backfield for Blanton. Takes the snap, drops back, steps up. Here comes the rush, he's gonna run. And he gets two, three yards, that's it. Logan Hudson with a, I guess that might be a hip drop tackle. Yeah. I never knew what a hip drop tackle was until a couple of months ago, you know, before the season started. That, that, uh, did, they, did they say that was illegal or something in the pros? It's, it's evidently illegal, but I don't even know what it is. I, I mean, don't know what if you've been either. watching football for about 60 years, and right. you've never heard of something? It's called a hip drop tackle? That's what they call it. And, Jeez. and evidently it's the one that put Joe Mixon on the injured list for the Texans. Oh, with his ankle, right? You got yeah. yeah. But I mean, you got to bring the guy down, right? If you're a defender, that's your job. Yeah, it's pretty hard nowadays to do everything legally. Now there's a timeout for the Falcons. All right, why don't we look at some scores during this timeout? I was hoping you would. By the way, you that. know about Duncanville and DeSoto, right? Yeah, well, the last I saw, Duncanville was up pretty big. Yeah, it is 35 to 35-6 Duncanville, the number one ranked team in the state in Class 6A. 35-6 to over DeSoto, game in the third quarter. 
And let's see. The Longview Lobos leading Forney 28 to 14 at halftime. And my son, who goes to Letourneau University in Longview, might be at that game, for all well, I know. Uh, well, how are the, uh, how's the... Uh, Longview Pine Tree? Pine Tree. How's okay. Pine Tree doing? I will look for them. Because that's the, that's the one I want to hear. All right. Atascacita whooping up on Humble 39 to 3 in the third quarter. That's kind of expected. Atascacita, probably one of the best five teams in the state. Katie Jordan leading Seven Lakes, but only 14 to 7 at halftime. I believe Katie Jordan can make a run at the KD Tigers for that district title. You heard it right here. Roger Smith made that prediction on October 11th. <laughs> All right. Foster with third and 34 to go. Dropping back is Blanton. He has time, but he's flushed to the left. Makes a run for it. Ooh. And he goes out of bounds, and Logan Hudson gives him a love tap. A, a tap I, to I think, make sure uh, he stayed out of bounds. And he didn't hit him too hard. No, it, it he did frighten the girl who's one of the uh, <laughs> trainers. Yeah, she well, had they, a, her Gatorade six-pack in her hand. And, she scurried away in a and big And now she's, she's got that I'm a little verklempt, you know, hand on the clavicle. Oh, jeez. It was scary. Oh. Well, I mean, you know, she's at football just, practice. She knows how fast these guys I move. Know, you just... Do you study the dictionary before you come? Because you come up with these. Well, you remember books. Linda Richmond on Saturday Night Live. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm a little clipped. <laughs> you know. Well, I, I don't. I don't watch You don't that remember. Show. Uh, I, well, I don't watch it. I haven't watched it for I about 30 years. That. I don't remember that. Since Rice beat Texas. <laughs> yeah. Lopez. Oh, what a punt this is. But Brown fields it at the 26. And he's dropped like a bad habit right in his tracks. That's number 28, I believe. Yeah, and that is a guy I've been waiting to see him catch a pass. He's been lining up, and they usually don't throw it to him. It is Cooper Venable. Yep, the, the junior wide receiver was right there making the tackle. Good job by him on the coverage. So, if let's see, if he's 16 or 17, he's Cooper, not very venerable, Venable. Because venerable is a nice way of saying old, right? You are... Uh, you're going deep, digging deep into the well here. A penalty against Fulcher on the return. Did you say there was a penalty? Yes. I'm shocked. Ah, uh, yeah. That's. I, I just, we got to be over 20. I mean, it's really been unbelievable. Okay. Well, I think you can kind of, I'm not going to say excuse. That's too strong of a word. Yes. Because this is a rivalry game. Yes. Tippers are high, but... Both of these teams are going to need to say, we're going to get back on the discipline train next week. Yes, you would think. Yeah, you got to, some of it is the emotion, obviously. New line of scrimmage after the penalty is the 17. Fulcher leading 36 to 17, and Forks hands off. I think that's Zane Smith, and he got buried in the backfield for a loss of one. Good play there by the defensive line. Jackson Green strutting away from the play like I did good right there. You know how I knew it was uh, Zane Smith on that play? I, the I, hair? I saw the hair flopping <laughs> at the point of tackle. Yeah, there's some volleyball players. Fulcher doesn't have too many of them, but they wear the attachments that cover up their their jersey number on their back, and That's sometimes I don't know yeah. which is which. Yeah. For, fortunately, the Fulcher girls, I think there's only one of them. And I know which one. Oh, what a tackle. There's a quick flip into the flat. Flip to the flat. How about that for alliteration? Braden Kennedy made the catch, but he was upended immediately. So it's only a gain of four. And it'll be third and seven. Let's but we won't see what happens until... But Parnell made the tackle. I wanted you to okay, sorry. give him credit there. All right. Parnell made the tackle to end the third quarter. We'll be back on VibeFortBend.com. 36-17. Fulcher over Foster. We are the volleyball school with three locations, Katy, the Woodlands, and our newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to get on the top club and school teams, and you'll have fun doing it. Our Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. 
Okay, folks, um, you know what you can do? Whether you play uh, Root for Fulcher or Foster, you can listen to our game between Randall and Texas City. Starts at 11 a.m. Hey, dads, you're out there. you got a garage project. Go out there and do your work and listen to Randall versus Texas City. Well, not only are you going to listen to the game, but you'll be listening to Roger Smith. Well, but also N.D. Kalu and Josh LaRocca. Right. That Heroes happens. of the 94 Rice win over Texas. Third down and six. Forks drops back on the play action and flips it out here to Broadway. Makes one man miss, and he's tackled at the 24, and that's short of the first down. Foster's defense clamping down. They reacted well. Oscar Trevino finished it off, and it's now fourth and three, and surely <laughs> Fulcher will punt it from where they are inside their 25. They're staying out there. I, that was a, not one of the players for Foster goes down, cramping, I believe. Yeah. Uh, that was a really good play because Broadway was out in the in the open there and good open field tackle. I, don't, I think it's number 26. Joshel Ivey. He's played a good game tonight. All right, so how about some uh, more scores? Yeah, more scores while they attend to Mr. Ivey. What do you got? I, I have to skip a whole bunch of these that just are not going to be of interest to people in the Houston area. The Manville Mavericks leading Pasadena Rayburn 56-7 to mm. in the fourth quarter. And Pasadena Rayburn used to be a pretty good football program. But in, in 1979, we, the McCullough Highlanders, who later morphed into the Woodlands Highlanders, ruined their homecoming. Oh, boy. And they've never been the same since. <laughs> what a drought it's been for Pasadena Rayburn. Pretty, pretty soon they're going to be interviewing you about uh, I don't think past they will. games. I don't think they will. <laughs> That's the only game I ever made any kind of difference in. Well, they'll 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 they'll, uh, they'll sell that one as the game that turned. Was it Rayburn? You said or uh, yeah? They turned their program around forever. downward forever. In, a, in a bad way. <laughs> Well, it's fourth and three, Roger, from their own 24, and they are looking like they're going for it. Wow, this is uh, hubris point. right here. That's what it is, hubris. <laughs> they have nobody back there to receive a punt snap, and they flip it out to Broadway. No, it's Mike he's Brown, short. and he, did he get it? It depends on where they mark it. They're short, It's Roger. near the 27, oh. and a flag is down. It came from near the Fulcher bench. Bye. Golly, what, what in the world happened down there? I saw number seven coming out of the out of the sidelines. I don't know if he did something or I don't know. It's going to be an unsportsmanlike type penalty again, I think. Well, we need Mr. Alsa Brooks's microphone. microphone to work, and it has been ever since Mr. Gabbard gave him a new battery. They are talking. He's talking to his field judge, and they're having a long discussion. Looking left and looking right. Here comes another guy out there. Here they go. Turning the mic on now. And I'm going to stop talking, Roger, when he starts talking. The wheels Don't of worry. justice are turning yeah. slowly. <laughs> Don't worry, Roger. I'm going to stop. Uh, the scales of justice. Well, you're doing a great job filling this time. Because <laughs> it's too long. It's way too long. And now he's talking to the Fulcher sideline. He's got the microphone turned on. Let's hear it. The game, so the ball will turn over on down. After the play, number seven, unsportsmanlike conduct. That is the second one, so he is disqualified for the remainder of the game. 15 yard penalty from the dead ball spot. First down. So what happened is they didn't get the first down. The penalty came after the play, so that stands. Well, but what's interesting though is. If it's number seven for Foster, it's Sincere Helton. He didn't say number seven of Foster. He just said number seven. Well, and the Fulcher fans assume that they've well, called it on Helton, and I guess they are because are they walking? Yeah. Uh, no, they said it was. The, they, they said the penalty was on Foster, number seven, and then they said it was his second offense. Okay. They, well, I was listening real hard. I didn't see him point at Foster or say Foster. I just heard him say unsportsmanlike conduct, yeah. and that's the second one on number seven, and he's out of the game. Yeah. So, well, then the bottom line is Helton 
is it Helton, right? Yeah, and we know it was against Foster because of the way they walked. Yeah, so it's a... They backed up the Falcons. So instead of at the 24-yard line, 26-yard line or whatever, they're going to be back at the 41. But they did stop them. And, you know, still a little bit of life for the Falcons. Look at the backfield. They got big 85 back there. All right. It is Blanton at quarterback in the spread formation. First and 10 from the Fulcher 41. Blanton looks left, throws right in the backfield, gets a completion, but it's a completion for a loss. He throws it to Oscar Vargas, and he's absolutely buried. Logan Hudson, Asher, Jacob, who has two Bible names, by the way. Yeah. And also uh, David Obinor. So uh, Logan's in there again. He's Logan Hudson. I wonder how many tackles he's got tonight. Him and, uh, and Augustus really uh, all over the place. Second down in 13 after that three-yard loss. And Blanton with the Falcons in this fourth quarter moving left to right. The ball on the near hash. Blanton looks out into the flat, throws a completion, and it's it's going to get him closer to that stick. They pick up about 10 right there, so they'll be facing a third down and three, and they threw it to Jack Den Herder. You know, uh, wasn't it, was it, oh, was it Den Herder? I thought it was 16, but uh, I think you're right. But he did a good job of just going straight up the field after the catch. He, he picked up about four yards by just going up the field immediately. No dancing. Tyson Denman, the big guy in the backfield that you noted earlier, yeah. he is to the left of Blanton. Blanton steps up in the pocket, escapes trouble, run into the outside, gets outside the numbers, first down and more inside the 25. Boy, he's a, he's a quick runner. And I, I don't see any flags. No, I think no flags. Uh, it's a clear first down as Eamon Eddie Alley brought him down. I didn't think he was going to get to the edge, but he showed good speed. And he got there for the first down and more. All the way down to the 21-yard line. And I think Fulcher is calling timeout. Or somebody's calling timeout here. Well, you know what? That is a first down. Think of first tire and automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. All right, let's look for some more scores. Uh, we were we were hoping you had a few more for us. All right, Summer Creek, 46 to seven over C.E. King, third quarter. You remember when we did the High Tower versus C.E. King playoff in NRG Stadium yes, I last do. year? I do. Okay, so C.E. King is not a bad football team, but they they're they just can't beat North Shore. Yeah, can't beat Atascosita, can't beat Summer Creek. So all, they'll all, almost always have three district losses and be the fourth seed out of that district going into the playoffs. First and 10 for Foster and the quarterback, Blanton, hands it off. Akinbele, uh -oh. and the ball comes out, and it is scooped up, I guess, by Fulcher, and the Chargers get the football back. And now we got some snarling and snapping and, and flags mark. flying oh, as Eamon Eddie Alley comes out of there with the football. And uh, now he throws it to the official and says, you can't keep that ball, son. Throw it to me. Well, it's a foster football. Yeah, that's right. It's a foster <laughs> offensive football. Well, another penalty on the play, and uh, boy, oh, boy. That's a tough chance for foster. They had something going, and uh, they fumbled it. I'm so tired of describing penalties, Patrick. Yeah. I'm just going to go look go for scores. scores. Go to the scores, yeah. All right, the Woodlands College Park leading Conroe Caney Creek. 49 to seven in the third quarter. Conroe Caney Creek. Okay, so like nothing ever happened. Anyway, Conroe Caney Creek. They just never are relevant in football, ever. It's crazy. They've been around a while. Uh, Alito, I ain't talking about that. <laughs> Third quarter, Angleton leading Friendswood, 31 to seven. And I think next week, Kempner plays Angleton. I don't think we're broadcasting it, but we'll see. First down and 10 from the 24 for Fulcher, leading 36 to 17. Keeper by Forks, comes out of the crowd, and he's bullied after a three yard gain to the 26. 
<laughs> they never actually got him on the ground, did and, they? And number five, uh, what is who is that again? That's uh, Ojaku. <laughs> He had him wrapped up, the whistle blew, and then he lifted him off the ground and and just lifted him off the ground. I don't know why he did that, but he did, and that drew a little bit of a, you know, reaction, I guess, from the Polster crowd. It was kind of funny. <laughs> well, I, I and nobody it, got hurt. Nobody got hurt. It, I think it was just a innocent little jag. Forks is a sophomore. He's not a real big kid, so at this point he's a dessert fork. And it's easy to pick oh him up like boy. that. Roger. Second down and seven. And run into the left. It is Broadway in heavy traffic, but making his way to the 32. That's a pickup of six. It'll be third down, and they will still need two. Foster has, you know. One, sorry. There, there's been some big plays for Fulcher, no doubt about it. But they've really done a pretty good job on a lot of these plays. Uh, I've been pretty impressed by their pursuit and their uh, ability to wrap up they did a pretty good job against a good Fulcher team here they are undefeated run into the left Broadway finding daylight where mere mortals like you and I can't really see it but somehow he advances out to the 38 and that's a first down think of first Tyrant automotive for all your car care needs Check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. Five-yard pickup moves the sticks. Well, if we could avoid a few penalties here uh, at the end of the game, we might be able to, this, this clock might expire with, the, with all these running plays. I would imagine they're just going to keep the ball on the ground here. Three running backs behind Forks, and there's the give to Demarius Fro into the fray. Throw into the fray, oh and a flag comes in at the I, end of the play. I spoke too soon, Roger. And it's like a pickup of two or three. What happens now? Let's find out. Somebody grabbing. Caden Bateman, no relation to Jason Bateman. <laughs> I... I at the risk of being redundant, I've never seen so many penalties like this. These these large penalties, face masks, late hits, uh, unsportsmanlike conducts. Ooh. It's edgy. It is edgy. I think there's more penalty yardage in this game than both teams combined on offense. You may be right. First and 10 from the 46 after that penalty. There goes Mike Brown on the jet sweep, turns it up, spins along the far row of hash marks, and he picks up seven to the 39 of Foster. One of the tacklers in there, uh, Granda, J.P. Granda. <laughs> like Ariana Grande, G-R-A-N-D-A. Uh, well, is it Grande? Well, anyway. He might be a coffee size at Starbucks, when he, the Grande. When he... Uh, when the runner, uh, Brown, was slowed down enough, he basically just pancaked him. <laughs> he just jumped on him. and I think he was really happy he was able to get a chance for a, a hit there on the little man. And now a give to Zane Smith. Run uh -oh. left, turning it up, up the middle. There he goes, 20, 20, uh, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Oh boy. He a 40 yard run and now it is officially a route. He really found the gap and he showed good speed once he got in the opening. I thought somebody might catch him, but he had uh, he had the end zone in his sights and he wasn't gonna be stopped. 42 to 17 with the perhaps, perhaps kicked extra point nope, to come. Not not coming. Not coming. They're going for two. Do they even have a kicker on the roster? Yeah, they got a kicker. Well, there he is. It's uh, Alejandro Quinones. Quinoro, Quinones. He's a sophomore. I have not seen an extra point kick yet. All right. Kind of an empty backfield for Forks. And now Brown in motion. Fake to Brown. Bootleg left. Throws off his back feet. And it's incomplete. Intended for Kennedy. And the score will remain 42-17. to 5.58 to go. 
in the fourth quarter. By the way, you remember that Port Arthur Memorial team? We saw them go to overtime and lose to our Hightower Hurricanes. Well, they are leading Barbers Hill 13 to 10 in the third quarter. That looks like it would be a very entertaining game to watch. All right, they have a little sign on their flag, Roger. Maybe you could help me out with the- Oh, yes, I can. It's, it's welcome to the dirty. What does that mean? The dirty F, that's what they call Fulcher, the dirty F. The dirty F. And uh, if you would ask me about the foster flag, I could tell you what it says. It says, protect the nest. Okay, I, I, I understand that one, but what is the dirty, the, the dirty F? Uh, what does that mean? They're grimy, they're edgy. Uh, it's just, hmm. it's just kind of what they are. Okay. I just don't know. I've just never heard of that. So I guess they made it up themselves. And they've made some t-shirts and you might see some little cartoon hands, you know, making a letter F. Uh-huh. Kind of like big old hamburger helper hands. <laughs> hamburger helper? Yeah. I mean, you know, hamburger helper, you know, the little <laughs> mascot. Yeah. Oh, when's the last time you've had hamburger helper? I never had it once. <laughs> Thank you, Mom, for never making me eat I, I don't think hamburger I ever, helper. I don't know if I ever did either. All right, so it looks like it's going to be Peyton Tucker to kick off is the conventional way. I think he is. One guy running at the football, and he boots it deep. And it comes down to Parnell moving back to the middle of the field, cuts up at the near hash marks and gets across the 25 to the 28. Uh, let's see what else we got. Any scores that you might like? A&M consolidated. It's kind of painful to mention them. They knocked Fulcher out of the playoffs last year. Oh, yeah. But we don't have to worry about them now because Fulcher is in Class 6A. And College Station A&M consolidated is in 5A still. And they are leading Kyle Lehman 49 to nothing at half. 49 nothing at half. Yeah, there's a, a little town south of Austin called Kyle. Boy. Sounds, and it has nothing to do with Kyle Fields. Sounds like a mismatch. Yeah, it's it's one of those communities that's kind of big, but evidently doesn't have a strong football program. Well, judging by that score, I think you're right. All right, 5.50 to go. Here's the snap, and it's a running play to the left. A new runner. Hardly anything for uh, Jordan Williams, and I think he might have carried once earlier. So He's a sophomore. I believe that's his second carry. He uh, he took a beating on that one. And it's not his fault. There's no, just no, no, I, no hole to run through. He ran hard, but it was no, no daylight for him. I remember a, a coach that I had back in at Booker T. Washington Junior High in Conroe. Booker T. Washington. And I remember Junior High. him saying to running backs, not me, he said, if there's not a blankety blank hole, make one. That reminds But that's a little too much to ask there. <laughs> oh boy, that's a classic line there. Second and ten from the twenty-nine for Foster, trailing forty-two to seventeen, short pass, complete. I think that's Den Herder. He's got an eight-yard gain. All right. So I had a. Uh, this is true now. I had it a, is. I had a guy, a, a, a PE coach. And we mentioned junior high, so I was at junior high, and my PE coach was was Books. His last name was Books. Books. How about that? Guess what? His, guess what his first name was, or his nickname? Te Open Tex. Tex Books. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. By the way, uh, Den Herter got nine yards on the play, so it's third and one. 4.20 to go in the clock, ticking down. Here goes the quarterback keeper, and it's going absolutely nowhere. Look Logan Hudson there. said, not so fast, my friend, as Riley Blanton goes down in a heap. And well, it's now going to be fourth and three. Will they go for it? If they had, if, they, if, if Fulcher was the type of team that had... Uh, Helmet stickers, you know, for good plays and stuff. I would say Logan uh, Hudson would get a about four, five, six, seven of them tonight. Boy, well, for the been, season, his helmet would just be covered in them. He wouldn't. You wouldn't see the logo anymore, would you? So I don't know what helmets Fulcher wore last week, but if this is the first time, they are going to be one and zero with the lightning bolt helmets. It's, 
sharp looking. 3.51 to go and a timeout taken by Fulcher, I believe. I didn't see the indication. Well, I think I saw Mr. Alsabrook's point in the Chargers direction. So there, that must be it. You got more scores? I might. He's going to look for I'm us. Just going to keep on he's, scrolling. He's scrolling. And keep ro on scrolling. Roger does a keep good job. Scrolling. Let's see if I, I had a couple questions coming in. And now would be a good time to ask them. Uh, I can do it. At, yeah, I can feel the question while I scroll. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to. I'm trying to. Uh, I had two bands I was uh, going to ask you to tell me which you liked better, and I now I've forgotten them. That's just. That's just sad that I brought that up and I can't remember. Well, they're playing Hell's Bells. Yeah, well, it wasn't AC. But now they're not. Um, I was going to ask you to, to, to tell me which of the two that you would prefer, and I, I've just lost it. I wonder if it will come back. Baby, not, come back. Not that it's that important. Foster is going to punt. Fourth and three. Good snap. Lopez gets it away. And it's a fair catch called for and made by Mike Brown at the 25. And now these teams look like essentially they are agreeing to be civilized. Yeah, I think so. And nice and just play out the last three minutes and 44 seconds. I'm going to tell you something. Number uh, Mike Brown, the soft or the freshman, yeah. does not play like a freshman. Oh, like no. He is, I mean, he's the punt returner for crying out loud. A guy you got to have, uh, you got to trust that guy, and they, they trust him as a freshman. My goodness. He's, uh, he's got quite a future ahead of him. By the way, when I lived in El Paso, they built a new school called El Paso Chapin. It was named after someone Chapin? who was, uh, yeah, uh, I think prominent in the Army. Not, not Harry Chapin. Not Harry Chapin. Okay. All right. Uh, Fork still in there. Drops back, and he's going to throw deep. Brown is open, makes the catch near the 40 of Foster, and he's dropped at the 41. Caden Carter brought him down, and Mike Brown did such a good job of locating the ball, and Carter yeah. turned around too late to really figure out where that, it was. That was a, an indication of what I just said. He doesn't play like a freshman. He doesn't play like a sophomore. He plays like a senior out there. And okay, so Chapin, yeah, evidently sorry. they're the Huskies. Okay. But I, when they, that, that school opened while I still live there, and I've had a better idea for their mascot. Oh, okay. There goes Demarius Fro, tripped near the line of scrimmage, but picks up four yards. No, I'm sorry, picked up two to the 40. All right. Okay, so there was this particular legend, never proven, where there was a, a, a beast called the Chupacabra. Jeez. Which it kind of looked like a oh, coyote, oh my gosh. and and ate goats and other small okay, farm so animals. That's the mascot. So that's I thought it should be the Chapin Chupacabras, <laughs> but no one agreed with me. <laughs> Who are we? We're the what? The Chupacabras. Chupacabras. You could call them the Chups. You know, and you you know the problem with that one, Roger, is you people can't pronounce it. By the way, we got a timeout here. Yeah. Oh, you can't you tell? Okay, did you think of that band <laughs> I know, thing? I, I just, Not uh, that anyone out there listening to right. us cares what I think about yeah, well, one band versus another. Nor does anybody care what what I'm trying to figure out on that. But. By the way, Iowa Colony leading Santa Fe 34-7 to in the fourth quarter. So Iowa Colony is a pretty good team. And when they play uh, Marshall, I think we might broadcast that game. That would be a good one. Iowa Colony. Where exactly is Iowa Colony? Well, it's Colony. south of Arcola. If you go down Highway 6 and you go past where the Crawford uh -huh. High School is, yeah. you just go a little bit farther and then turn right, I think, on 288. So it's not it's not all the way to Santa Fe. It's not. No, Santa, Santa Fe is further closer to Galveston. Yeah, okay. So, but, uh, but Iowa but, Colony, you know where Freedom Field is? Alvin ISD Freedom Field? Okay. That's that's right by Iowa Colony High School. Forks is going to throw again. Oh, what a Near catch. the sideline and Mike Brown, a spectacular catch. Boy, you know, boy. academically, he's still a freshman. Yep. In football, he should be given, you know, he clepped out a <laughs> freshman football. He's a sophomore. Yeah. If not uh, an early junior. 
he he plays really good football. And what I'm excited about is he's he's still kind of small. He might I'm grow. sure he's gonna yeah. get some some height and yeah, strength. He, he has and he's already doing great things. He hasn't even hit his growth spurt yet. 32 yard line, first and 10. Now Forks is gonna throw it again. Screen pass and flag comes in. Broadway open inside the 20. Another flag comes in and Broadway goes all the way down to the goal line, but I think this, this is, is coming back. I think so. It might be coming back twice. Two penalty markers, one at the point of attack, the other one downfield. They might both be holding or some kind of illegal block. Block in the back, offense, penalty is required. Moving 74 offense, 10 yards from the previous spot. So that'll bring them back outside the 40. We're just playing out the string here, folks. 2.05 to go, and it is 42 to 17, Fulcher, over a very game Foster team that's yep. played well. They've just made some mistakes that have made the scorer suggest that this game was more one-sided than it was. Yeah, a couple of the onside kicks too. They they didn't they didn't get those, and uh, those are tough plays to. First and a long way. And Forks throws, and he's got his man, Jametta. Caught it inside the 20 and brought down at the 18-yard uh, line with a nice little submarine last resort tackle. I like the way you said that, Roger. Third, uh, second down and a long way. Second down and a long way. That's what you said. Yeah, there was, it was 20 to be exact. <laughs> but Jametta more than got what he needed. Wesley Absolutely. Archer brought him down. All right, another, there, marker. another marker comes in uh, on a short running play by Fulcher with 1.30 to go, and I'm kind of surprised they still have their starters out I there. I was just going to ask you that same question. Uh, it seems like with the game under control and totally in hand, you don't want a guy like Broadway Hurt or uh, uh, the guy who ran uh, Fro. You, know, you don't want those guys getting hurt here late in the game when you've already got it locked in you still got Zane Smith in there as well it's not like they don't have a lot of players out there who could get in there I would imagine well they have put in uh, one of the running backs that doesn't get too many carries Caden Bean yeah he's carried twice tonight yep and now it's a pistol formation I'd like to see him get the ball here again not this time but it's no. gonna be a throw by Forks near sideline behind Mike Brown and good defense there Caden Carter and Caden is, he's holding <laughs> his head like something went wrong. Well, I think he realized that the ball kind of went right over his head. If he, like he could have picked it off. Yeah, if he would have just, okay. instead of uh, playing the receiver, if he'd have looked at the ball, I think he might have picked that thing off because it was overthrown. 107 well, I, to play. You know what I think uh, the little subplot is here? I think Fulcher wants 50 points. I think you're right about the subplot because what are we throwing for here? And uh, I think they want more points. Which 107 to go, and there's a toss sweep going to the right. Bean near the sideline, hurdles a man, wow. and gets a first down and goes down inbounds near the 15. You got the first marker, Roger. He's a, oh, yeah, you're right. I'm uh, sorry. I kind of lost my concentration. Yeah, well, he really ran hard. He got a good blocking, and then he finished off the run. You talk about finishing off the run going forward. He was doing a good job there. He's not a big guy, but he packed a powerful punch there. And they're hurrying to the line with 36 seconds to play. I'm not sure Forks, why. Toss sweep. Here comes Bean to the near side. Makes one man miss. Gets inside the 15 to about the 12. And then they push him back. Oh, and they're not going to go. They're not going to run another play. I'm, I'm glad to see that. Oscar Trevino made that final tackle, and it will be the final play of the game. Now here's the play of the game here. Zane Smith helped. Uh, number 47. Who is it? Trevino. Trevino. He helped him off the off the uh, off the ground on the last play of the game, and they tapped each other on the shoulder. So, uh, how about that? We end on a on a peaceful note. <laughs> the olive branch has been extended. <laughs> exactly. By the way, I what are they playing over the speaker here? I don't know. 
I just wonder if there's a thematic song that they play. It might be. Well, tell them the final score, Roger. Oh, I know what it is. It's Purple Rain. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I should have known that. You're, you're good, Roger. You're really good. All right. Well, Patrick, uh, 42 to 17 is our final score. The Foster Falcons uh, play hard, but they fall to two and one in their district games, and Fulcher improves to three and zero. Oh, and I guess they are now seven and zero. Oh. Yep. Six and zero. Oh, seven and zero. Oh. You know, I don't know if they've had their open week or not. I'll say it more easily. They're undefeated. They're undefeated. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, tomorrow, oh, I was going to see if you had any kind of post-mortem, anything to say on this ball game. Uh, it was a good game. It was, uh, it was uh, as you uh, uh, what was what's the word? It was chippy, chippy, uh, but uh, rivalry game. I, I felt like Foster played a pretty gallant game against a, a very talented Fulcher team. Yes, and I like what I'm seeing now, the uh, uneventful handshake yep. line. Uh, doesn't look like they're... Any problems, you know, we are neighbors. Yeah, and lastly, Foster's going to win some more games this year. I'm pretty confident of that. Yeah, and Coach Hanks is, uh, you know, when he took over the program, um, you know, last year, uh, I won't say the cupboard was bare, but there was kind of an, an yep. absence of the talent that uh -huh. you need to win games in this district. It takes a while to get things going. And now they're up in Class 6A, and yet... Uh, vast improvement over last year already. So mm -hmm. I think they have a very good chance to make it to the playoffs because the teams they're competing against, you have the A-Leaf schools and you have George Ranch, which I believe that uh, that Foster can play with George Ranch. That'd no question be a about good that. Game to watch. And they also will take on straight Jesuit, a pretty formidable yes. opponent. Yes, yes. All right, well... We are done for tonight. I love to hear the kids singing. It's very nice. So I'll stop talking here soon. Uh, all right, 42-17. Fulcher defeats Foster. We'll talk to you tomorrow at about 11 a.m., about 15 till, to be exact. Just don't forget to uh, to thank the mothership tonight. Oh, yes, Rosie Bega. Thank you. Rosie Bega inside the mothership at Vipe World headquarters. A rose by any other name would not smell as sweet. You're wonderful, Rosie. <laughs> All right, so we'll talk to you tomorrow when it is Randall against Texas City on your one and only broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. And the Foster Band will sing us off.